There we go. Okay. What's going on, everyone? Sorry. We had uh, some uh, slight technical difficulties, but here we are in the studio with Jared from uh, Selective Creations. How you doing? Not bad. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Yeah, no problem. No problem. It's a little late out there, yeah? Uh, yeah, it's about 9-11. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> so, so, so tell us. Um, eight, uh, let's start off with how you got into the, into the, I guess ball pythons or breeding. You've because you've been into reptiles for a long time. You have you have quite yeah. a lot of reptiles. Yeah, I mean, it started when I was younger. Like I feel like a lot of us, you know, it happens at least. Um, you know, there's plenty of us that get into it when we're young. And when I was a kid, I was always hunting for frogs and salamanders. And I think I was like five years old when my dad caught a red belly ring neck snake. And once I saw that thing, I just fell in love with snakes, you know, and I was always going out hunting the, uh, the decays brown snakes and finding hundreds of those and bringing those back to the house. and. It evolved from that to going to the fairs and catching the anoles and like the little goldfish games. And you had the choice between a goldfish or a green lizard. And I was like, I want that green lizard. <laughs> but then. So, so after, what was the, the green lizard? The green, the anole? The green anoles, yeah. Right. Back in the day, they used to have tons of them at the fairs. You know, nowadays those are practically endangered in Florida down here. Uh, you barely ever see them anymore. So, but evolved from there, just that was my natural passion for reptiles, you know, just evolving. And then I got my first, I got interested in ball pythons around 1997 or 98 when I saw like the first couple morphs, you know, for sale and I had Reptiles Magazine back in the day. That was a big thing for me. So you see all these morphs in Reptiles Magazine and that got, got me into it. I was going into the back page and you could find like the Fauna Classifieds and Kingsnake.com and it had all the individual breeders listed and I'd go and just scound, you know, scrounge their websites and I'd keep up with everything just throughout the whole history of the hobby basically. And it was a natural passion. I just, I, I took on to it like it was my schoolwork, basically. <laughs> but, and, and that's what, it's interesting because that's what a lot of us do, right? I mean, it, the, the true, even hobbyists or just people who are interested in it, because I do the same thing, right? You're going to go get as much stuff as you possibly can on that subject, read up on it. I mean, and I saw someone, um, hold on, let's see. Hey, can you guys give me a thumbs up? Let's just make sure that we're we sound good, that you guys can hear us before we start rambling on for too long. Yeah, <laughs> we had an issue before. <laughs> Guess the thumbs up or something. Just let us know that, that that we can hear. Like we can hear each other. I can hear him. He can hear me. But let's make sure you guys can hear us. But um, I'll just start off. This is even if they don't hear us on this one. Let's let's hope they they jump on. But um. So I saw some posts on on uh, Instagram today, right? They had like uh, Steve Irwin, Jeff Corwin, and all these. Um, damn, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jack Hanna was on Saturday. Jack Hanna, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I watched them. Sometimes I didn't. But those a bunch of these guys growing up in the '90s, eight, late '80s, early '90s that yeah. that I grew up on watching, which really. I don't know, expanded, expanded my mind. Like, like Steve Irwin was on the reptile side, right? Heavy reptiles. Cause yeah. he did the Australian stuff. And Jeff Corwin was more like the safari, but he did some reptile stuff. And then uh, those, a the guy, I, I think even Jeff Corwin went down to um, South America and did the um, anacondas and some stuff over there. But it's, it's kind of that thing, right? When you're little, it piques your interest. So you just dive in. I did the same yeah. thing. Yeah, hundred percent. I used to watch all those guys, and actually, before them, even before Steve Irwin, like I used to watch uh, Marty Stalfer's Wild America, and like 
Oh yeah, I used, yeah, I used yeah. to love that show when I was a kid, man. <laughs> all the BBC Pauls um, on the BBC network. They had man, they had so much stuff. The the National Geographic, the, the yeah. stuff growing up. But but talk about what because you were on a live. Um, you were on a live on Instagram that we did in in uh, with um, with Snake Brothers. Or Snake Bros, whatever you want to call him, that's his, his handle on Instagram is Snake Bros. And you were mm-hmm. talking about um uh like where you used to work. You're out in Florida right now, yeah? Yeah. you have you, you actually you're actually in a good spot for reptiles out there because there's it the climate is nice and there's a ton of reptiles out there. But but talk about what you did um where you used to work because uh you used to work at um you tell us. I don't know where you used to work. It was the. Are you talking about the venom stuff or? Yeah, all yeah, the stuff they yeah. used to do with venom and just all the yeah, reptiles. So yeah, on the side point of that, I worked at the Southwest Florida Venom Farm, and I was nice. doing my yeah. uh, my internship for my venom hours for the state of Florida for the licensing program. But I was like a little bit over 400 hours out of the 500 credit hours that I needed to take the testing. And the state went into the cycling of changing the laws and reclassifying things, like putting things into multiple class tiers and basically limiting like all four, four out of the five highest tiers to commercial, you know, um, use only. And that was, I had, you know, animals I invested in at the time, at the time in the facility that I planned on taking home. So kind of ruined it all, but it was still a great experience. (laughs) Hold on. I'm I'm just going to, I'm posting up for for people to come and hit the live. Yeah. Make sure we can, you can hear us. Yeah. Again, if you guys, you guys are in the chats, give us a, a thumbs up or one or something, just say something. That you can hear that you can hear us that we're we're good. Well, I but, I set this up. There it is. Hold on a second. So the, okay, so then in in so working, can you with, see? Can you real quick? Can you see YouTube comments and stuff? Yeah, yeah. you okay, you can't cool. see the comments. Um, you should no, be able. I mean, I've had I've had people on here who they can one they can see the comments. Thanks, Genomics. He says he says we're good to go. All I can see is I'm in the stream yard at you know, so all I can see is the stream yard screen. But either way, it don't matter. You can just can you highlight certain comments and stuff? Oh no no I'll I'll, I'll, po- I'll post them up on the um here yes yeah yes. there you go yeah we I definitely can. can. All right so yeah. Back to getting into it. Um, All game, thank you. So yeah, growing up, I was in, was into reptiles, and then originally I saw like the hypos and I think the the caramel albino, and then that was around like 1999, and then the clown came out. It was proven around that time, but before that, you know. I saw the spider come in, Kevin discovered the spider gene, and then he produced the bumblebee. And, you know, we got the spider into the albino early on and had that combination. So I saw a lot of those things early on that piqued my interest. Like my favorite morph as a kid was probably the Ultra Glow, which is the Ultra or the Caramel or yeah, it was, I think it was, no, Caramel Glow or something like that. It was the Caramel Hypo and candy glow i think they called it way back then candy glow (laughs) before the candy actually existed but um (laughs) that was my absolute favorite like phenotype in a ball python was that uh caramel looking alien head with that deep purple and uh you know glazy look to it and that just piqued my interest to where i dove in full full head of steam and I watched the Ralph Davis Reptiles YouTube channel, the New England Reptiles YouTube channel, Brian Barchick, like all these guys, I saw them come into YouTube and like I saw YouTube shape and just like they did. So I watched along the whole time and 
I benefited from that because I was able to watch like, you know, majority of these morphs come in as single genes and get crossed into each morph layer after layer after layer. So I have a good, um, I would say I have a good identification eye, like as far as seeing morphs and seeing combos because of that. No, and, and, and you definitely do. I've seen some of the stuff that you've picked out. And... <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll give it to you. Hey, so, so going back to you, what, what's your favorite snake? Um, um, regardless of species. Oh, my favorite snake entirely. Yeah. Um, it, it would definitely have to be the Amazon basin emerald tree boas, like the Ed Marino high white lines, the diamond yeah. lines, the snowflake lines, especially this alien line where it's like almost got little, little alien head faces in it. <laughs> nice. I mean, those things are wicked. I just, I'm going to get into those for sure. And you you have your phone, right? You're doing this on your phone? Yeah. If you turn it sideways, we get you bigger in the picture. Oh, okay. I was wasn't sure which there it is. was Look gonna be better. Yes. Oh we... sorry about that, everybody. Get it and get her set up. Yes, sir. There it is. All right, that's a little bit better than. Well, so then, so then, and ball python's favorite uh, morph and ball python. Whoops. I had ah. to switch it over. Yeah, it's all good. Let's get it reconnected. All right. So, single gene morph combination. What's the question? Dang. Okay. Let's do single gene and combination. Um, single gene is like extremely hard, obviously, with all the different ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like picking one out of so many. Yeah, I would say as of late, I want to say that redhead as a single gene is the most one of the most intriguing to me as far as like codons go, and then um, recessively. I would have to say um, the puzzle and sunset definitely intrigue me a lot. But as far as favorites go, I would have to, you know, clown has always been my staple favorite, but I'm shifting more towards like, I'm really digging the paint stuff right now, Sentinel. Oh yeah, that hey, that stuff is that stuff is actually nice. I, was, yeah. I, almost, I almost picked up this this female, a breeder female, who was possible sentinel. I'm like, eh, I don't know. This was this was a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good uh, untapped gene, and it's similar to like the redhead. That's why I probably choose those two as my favorite to, to focus and pinpoint right now because they both kind of fuzz up the pattern uh, paints obviously a lot more they reduce everything they re reduce the size of the alien heads along with fuzzing it up so that I feel like can get more tossed into pattern widening and banding morphs and combos like Enchi and Super Enchi and stuff like that because you're gonna bring back some of that size to the pattern with those combos and clean it up a bit. Nice. And then the redhead is really intriguing to me because it just kind of fuzzes everything up, but it gives the pattern a lot of structure. And when you cross it into things like clown, it also gives it some dorsal patterning. So dorsal nice. patterning and clown for me is like the next step. I love it. Yeah, mission. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so so you're trying to, are you trying to reduce pattern and clean it up? It depends, I contrast. So if I'm using a morph that's going to, you know, minimize the pattern, I'm gonna try to get that into combos that's gonna blow that pattern back out so I can see it again. Gotcha. Especially when I'm mixing it into things that I wanna see. So so what what so so then let's get into your your 
Um, what do you want to talk about? Either your future breedings that you're setting well, up now. So how, how in regards to what we're talking about now, as far as far as what you're doing with pattern, how are you? Where are you moving in that direction? Um, I'm moving in that direction as far as so something that I want to get into is uh, super blackhead stuff for one. Yeah. Um, but that really, really reduces pattern and opens up the, you know, so to say the blushing of the entire snake. So like I'm saying there, if you put a super black head into zebra, it's gonna widen and stripe those patterns back out. It's gonna blow those back out. Who knows what it can do, um, but let's find out, you know, that's, what, that's where my brain goes. Like, why would you put um, super blackhead into a black pastel Mojave, which is known to also reduce pattern and shrink it right. and make it linear, you know, things like that. Like, I, I think that way I want, I want to move away from adding things that stack with each other and go with more contrasting worse that we can kind of play on the idea of what they might look like, but we really can't say we have a clue. So, so you want one like busy and a something that reduces pattern, put them together and see what happens. Yeah. So yeah. as the greatest example, I have, uh, where is she here? I don't know, let me find her. I, uh, there she is. So this girl is a great example of something that I would want to do that with. Okay. Yeah, a, a nice, a nice little reducing pattern, a re, reducing type gene. So now her pattern is so wild and wicked that, and she's also got the pinstripe, which you know widens the pattern. So, so, so what is she? T tell us what she is. This girl, I got her from Joe Kinney at Gulf Coast Exotics as a, a hurricane pinstripe, 100% head clown. But you can see in her head there in the back of her neck and just her pattern overall. Well, then I'm going to I'm going to try some see if it see if it puts you on single. OK, hold on. Yeah. Wrong person. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, this, there you go. <laughs> so, she's just got such a wicked, crazy pattern. She's, uh, she came from a clutch that had yellow belly, but it, I can't really say that she has yellow belly. Um, Joe had a yellow belly version and... Yeah. It was a lot busier along the edges with the checkering and everything. But I've spoken to even Hans and other people, and she has a coloration. I don't know. I think that her pattern is a lot busier than your standard hurricane pinstripe. She's got a lot more of the eyelashes across the pattern. And I don't know. We'll see if she proves to be anything else. But for right now, she's a hurricane pinstripe, 100% heck clown, and she's just a phenomenal example. But Her something that I would want to do with her, since she is a few different morphs that widen pattern, is I would want to get that into something that's going to blow that blushing back out, similar to like a super blackhead or uh, paint because uh -huh. paint's going to really blow that pattern out and widen it out. I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to do with her. I got a little bit of time to decide, and I'm going to have some really stacked mail by that time. But she is uh, she's definitely my favorite type of pinstripe combo. Nice. So then, so then taking that to – oops. Taking that to um, to what? Um, so as of right now, the male that I would be breeding. 
And see, mission, have, I, mission I, says he likes he likes your snipe. Thank you, mission. So right now, I wouldn't say that I have a male planned out for her, but mm -hmm. if I was to put a male with her right now that I do have in my collection, I would probably put my fire hat red exanthic um clown visual to her yeah because the fire could only increase her coloration which is already lighter if she has anything in there that's like she may have honey which is a bell complex but it won't interact with fire negatively so it it's actually like fire and honey they're in the same complex right Fire and honey are the same complex, but it's the same as like if you were putting fire into phantom or fire into special. Uh, honey is like in that same complex as fire or as uh, special and um, phantom. So, so, so fire and honey are not in the same complex. So fire is in the same complex as fire vanilla. is bell, and I mean it's still considered the bell complex. But the uh, dang it is it is <laughs> yeah. But they but don't the, interact to create white snakes. Who the the fire? Yeah, fire and a lot of different bell complexes don't create white snakes. Right, because yeah. you take fire vanilla and that that's not a white snake. That's a yeah. that's an ALS. You take you take fire and disco, same thing. Those are in the same uh, on the same allele. Yep. Anyhow. So it's all complex, it's all allelic stuff, but it's not anything that is going to create an issue in the pairing, would create an issue in the pairing, but that's not something that I'm going to do. I'm going to have a better male for her by then. I'll probably be putting a double visual hat or a double visual, uh, or yeah, probably a double visual carrying an extra hat to her in the future, and it would be a combo of sorts, and... I would be one of my pairings that I'm going to be having next season is going to put blackheads, chocolates, blackhead clowns, and chocolate clowns. And that's the minimum from that pairing. And they'll all be possible right. double head type of DG. So I'm going to make a male to put to her in the future. <laughs> Nothing in my collection is good enough for her right now, but. Nice. So, so, okay. So, uh, that's that's one of your future breedings, right? That's just one of my females. Um, you know, and that's future breeding. Yeah, we're talking future. So, one of my pairings that's coming up that's actually happening this year that we just you know secured through rice reptiles is that pastel calico enchi spot nose het clown female, and. Uh, if you have a picture, I think, I don't know if you can share a picture or anything from Morph Market, but... I'll look for your Morph Market while you talk. Yeah, so we hey, got... So how you doing, CKP? So I picked her up over the weekend. I was actually already in discussions with Billy um, when Morph Market shared her on Instagram. <laughs> And I was like, oh, God, this is going to kill the deal. I'm not going to be able to get a better deal. <laughs> so <laughs> Billy still worked it out with me. Very grateful for that. He still gave us a, he still gave us a good deal. And um, so we're Billy getting her. Reputation creation, Billy, right? No, this is Billy at Rice Reptiles. Oh, Rice Reptiles, gotcha. Yeah, okay. in, you know, association with Canova and all that so this girl actually um the only year that she produced was two seasons ago 2022 and um that was by justin himself so uh i'm still waiting on the info if you can find it for what that pairing was but um billy at rice he paired her up last year to a black pastel spot nose hurricane clown uh -huh. so um, you know, if she has any kind of, if she has any kind of split clutch or, you know, retained sperm or anything, it would probably be from that male. But because she only had a successful pairing with Justin, I wanted to find out that pairing info. 
it's not something that's really heard of that they would retain for two years. But mm -hmm. just in case I get some odd snake in the pairing, I want to know what it could possibly be. Yeah, you, but, definitely, you definitely want to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that all came about, though, because my buddy at Green Dragon Brokers, Shannon Peck, hit me up. And he's like, I have this awesome male that I just picked up and I need you to find a female so that we can mm -hmm. kind of get them going. And I was like, all right, say enough. Like I just started scouring from Morph Market, you know, and how I do that or how I did that this time around, because I wasn't really looking for deals. I was looking for breeder females as I use those filters and those things are awesome. You know, I put clown, yeah any trait form female adult and then you know price high to low scroll down to where my price point is and start searching what you know downward and just start bookmarking stuff and then go back into your bookmarks and then start unbookmarking stuff and then yeah. when you get down to like your three it's a lot harder but then you go all right which one is the one that i saw the extra morphin potentially and start getting pairing info on that one and then if, you, if the pairing info has the extra morph in it that you think you see you've confirmed your suspicion that that is probably in that snake and i've gotten multiple snakes in my collection that way where they come with an extra morph that yeah i have my my eye that i see it and i you know, I may not exactly know the stack combination, but that's where I go to Morph Market. And that's why Morph Market's another tool. You know, shout out to Morph Market and Darien. But if I need to reassure myself on something, I'll go on there. I'll be like, even if it's a combo that's not available, I'll look for similar combos. I'll look for, you know, if it's a four gene combo, I'll look for the three gene combos, go to the sold, you know, filter out everything that's been sold already, something on hold, something for sale. You know hit all the avenues and then um if you can confirm that some animals have something and you you know i've been honest with the people who i've been buying them from and i'm like hey man i'm pretty sure that this snake has this in it and they're like you know i'm just not 100 percent entirely sure so it's yours if you get a good deal on it you get a good deal on it and you know kudos to them because that's how i would do it too if i'm not 100 percent positive you know maybe yeah. i'll just hold it back or something but you know some of these guys don't need to hold those snakes back so no because they need to have the visuals or they have things that are 100 percent not exactly and that's where you can find a good deal i mean probably the best deal i found recently was uh i bought a snake as a pastel redhead uh het clown and mm. immediately when i saw the thumbnail i mean i was looking at redhead heads cl clowns so i saw like a pastel and stuff already and when i saw this thumbnail i was like what else is in that pairing dude because that thing has something else and i don't know what it is but it's there so it yeah i clicked on it and it said that spot nose was the only other thing in that pairing Hmm. could not could not find a visual picture anywhere on the internet of a pastel spot nose yellow belly redhead i could find a pastel spot hmm. nose redhead but it just didn't have the reduction in the pattern and the flaming like this one does but it did have the key that i was looking for which was the head you know what does pastel spot nose redhead look like and that's when I discovered the interaction of spot nose and redhead leaves a overall full do dorsal stripe with pretty uniform, you know, uh, redhead alien heads that the, with the fuzzy outlining and everything. So, but the head on it, with the pastel, it didn't look spot nose and that's where it gets confusing. But yeah. that interaction with the redhead spot nose is so strong that it just incredibly overtakes the snake. But it's, so, it's it's similar then to the blackhead um, blackhead spot nose where where blackhead you can't even tell that the, by the head that it's a spot nose. Yeah, so, exactly. So ball game says, what male would you would you put to a pastel leopard yellow belly female? So imagine well, put, imagine putting a a blackhead gravel 
Something, something, something. Pastel leopard, yellow belly. Well, if you look at pastel Four. leopard freeways, that's always a good option to go, a route right. to go. Uh, you can do something with het clown in it if you're going a route that's going to be lower or visual clown to get hets in the first pairing or get possible hets and test them with the Definitely het mail. Recessive to get your recessive in there. Yeah, depending on where you want to take the project. But, you know, freeway leopard stuff is amazing, especially when you get it into clown and DG. And so this is that girl that I'm talking about here. Let's see. Well, okay, uh, what this is girl is the pastel spot nose redhead. Um, I'm sorry, it was a yeah, pastel spot nose redhead yellow belly, uh, 100% head clown. So, so the popcorn in on the side on the bottom on uh, by the belly, yeah, that's a yellow belly trait. Yep, is that that's all the yellow belly? Is that also that's the, yellow, that's the interaction of the yellow belly with the redhead? And then the okay. spot nose stripes it all out and then uniforms wow. all of the alien heads down the body. That's tough because that's the only way you can really tell that it's a it's a spot nose is is those alien heads being somewhat yeah. symmetrical. And on the head, if I can get her to turn around here, um, the redhead spot nose does tend to have uh just darker outlining on the eyes. It's nothing that's really specific, but it's in the back of the head here. Let's see. Get her. So that, that eyeliner, I get the oh, same. Yeah, it's like the, the darker eyeliner, especially yeah. in the middle of the head here. And then oh, the yeah? red head leaves that stamp at the back of the head, which on the spot nose version of the pastel is just a dark black head stamp in the back there it's hard to see but the spot nose is really visible and the striping and and the interaction with the redhead if you look up a redhead spot yeah. nose but that that sent this snake's value through the roof um having the spot nose in there specifically because a spot nose Redhead het clown female is on Morph Market right now, like sixteen seventy five, something like that, plus shipping. Uh, I forget what I got her for, but I got her. I think she was listed at seven fifty, and I got her actually a little bit better deal on her. Red redhead redhead almost seems to be a must these days. It's one of those new, one of the newer jeans. Um, yeah, redhead is amazing, guys. Um, the yellow belly mixed with the redhead and this snake really, really fuzzes up the bottom there with the popcorning and everything. Yeah. But the fuzziness around the actually actual alien heads is totally the redhead in itself. Yeah, that's nice. All that, all that blushing right around the yeah, that's nice. And then highlighted with the uh... so. This girl's future pairing to speak on it is going to definitely be my mail from Miguel, which is my triple hat. So, and and he, like Mission said, I mean, red hat man, there's so many jeans, it's it's crazy. There's so many jeans that, that we can there's jump so in. So many jeans just in this one snake right here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our mail, my new mail from Miguel. Yeah. This is this is a future pairing here. So you so, posted you posted that mail up uh recently on Instagram. Yep. Yeah, we just got him in. Um he's from the pairing that produced that snake in Miguel's recent video. Actually that was posted today. Um it's the uh Blackhead, chocolate, black pastel, leopard, yellow belly, or um, leopard redhead, or leopard possible redhead, triple head, hypo DG clown. Man. So if he proves out to be redhead, which I think he will, um, if you can see, he's got the fuzziness in his pattern. and Yeah, right at the bottom, for sure. Towards the belly. Yeah, so... 
We'll Celtic. see if he proves out to have the redhead. I think he will, especially down by the tail. It starts blowing out. Yeah, that's a, that's a good looking thing. And see, I like that striping of the of the alien heads that goes down the the sides. I used to have a um, what was it? Uh, I think it's a black hat and not black. It's a black pastel Mojave. You know how they have that? Yeah, the black magics. The black magics. Yeah, it's not yeah. quite that that extreme, but. Yeah, black magic are cool. Yeah, definitely. This is so genetically. This guy is stacked. Um, I fell in love with his look because once I get that into a hypo clown version, I mean, we've seen it in Miguel's videos. You can go to Miguel's video and you can see the hypo clown version of this boy, the clutch mate. And um, you know, hypo just turns everything gunmetal gray down the back, and the clown just connects all of the striping down to the belly throughout yeah. so i can't wait to make some of those but this boy paired with that girl if he proves to be redhead even if he doesn't um i'm still stoked and ecstatic with that pairing um but i think he will because as you can see there his pattern is just it's just all there's fuzzy no, and busted no up super redheads yet, right what's that are there super redheads yet yeah, they're super redhead. It's called the Envy. Um, the super redhead clowns have not been hit yet. So this is a pairing that could potentially produce those. Uh, before I'm able to do that, someone else will probably hit it. But at least yeah. I'm in that project. And then... Hey, hold, so, hold on. What, what's your, what's your um, Morph Market uh, store called? Me? Yeah. Uh, it's just Selective Creations, but... I don't have anything on there yet. Oh, so which one, which animal did you want me to look for on here? Um, I was going to have you pull up that pastel calico NTE spot nose female that I got from Rice Reptiles earlier. Rice Reptiles, okay. Hold on. But, so this count. male, um, he can only produce chocolates or blackheads because those two are allelic. Um, so everything from him will either be chocolate or blackhead. And then he also has the um, leopard. Gosh, there's so many genes in him. <laughs> so many more. <laughs> chocolate blackhead, black pastel leopard, possible redhead, triple head desert ghost type of clown. So I don't have Wookiee yet, but... Um, I live very close to Jeremy Bowd, who does, and I plan on getting into that probably next season. But if I get Wookiee, it's going to be in a male, and it's going to be probably something double recessive and definitely dark because I love what Wookiee does to dark morphs as far as throwing in blushing and, and really making them pop and stand out. So this male bred to or paired with that female could you know potentially you know if the odds were forever in our favor could potentially yeah. produce um super redhead pastel spot nose yellow belly black pastel leopard clowns <laughs> possible double hypo dg <laughs> Yeah. But everything from the pairing will be either black or blackhead or chocolate with combinations of visual clown, uh, black pastel, leopard, yellow belly pastel, and redhead for sure. Um, you know, potentially as far as combos go. So that's completely just stacked uh, as far as the potential for that pairing. I think the odds on that uh, all gene snake is like one in a thousand twenty five. <laughs> and I think there's over <laughs> like 500 different possibilities of clowns in that pairing and many of them being world first. So that's what we're really trying to go for is I have this mindset of I'm trying to put things together that I can potentially, you know, make something new i don't want to can necessarily you, you yep so that's the female that we got and she's going to be paired to a super red stripe leopard clown possible yellow belly so all the babies will be you know 
50 each egg would have a 50 percent chance of being clown and then um yeah so we could potentially produce everything would be red stripe either heck clown or red stripe clown and then we would have the ultimate combination of red stripe leopard possible yellow belly um and she calico spot nose pastel but i would personally prefer i don't know i don't know i would i would say i would personally prefer no pastel but honestly pastel is what calico overtakes in the alien head so without pastel you don't get as high white alien heads so yeah. i would love to see the pastel versions and the non-pastel versions which is why i don't mind her having pastel in her and um pastel is something that i don't put in my mails because you i don't spread it <laughs> yeah you got to keep it localized for sure that we were talking about that the other day too is like yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna get a uh, a male is gonna be the the one to no let's get rid of this one the one to spread it all as quickly as possible right because he's he's gonna he's gonna breed to many we're yeah, female. so <laughs> I always tell people my best advice as far as your males is, well, as far as your lesser desired traits is get them in your females. If you can get a female cheaper with a lesser desired trait in her than you could without it, and it's something that's going to benefit you, um, you can get that out of your projects a lot faster, but a female won't spread it. It'll be localized and only part, only some of the offspring will have that morph. Um, so like Lesser and Pastel and Mojave and, you know, certain bell complex, mainly um, yellow belly. I like to keep out of my males because I don't, I have a lot of females that I put yellow belly in and if I have males, then I'm going to be producing ivories and I don't want that. Nice. Yeah. And, and that, so one of the reasons I don't have yellow belly in the collection is for that reason. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I keep it localized to the females in certain projects because yeah. I know that if I hold back any animals from that pairing, then I would get them tested for yellow belly and if you have a male that you're unsure about having yellow belly in it get it tested for it because the the cost of you getting a male tested for yellow belly and knowing it has yellow belly before putting it to a yellow belly female and getting a seven thousand dollar snake that's white mm -hmm. is you know fifty dollars that's a big difference <laughs> 50 bucks and then you lose almost the total value of that snake yeah, exactly you can't sell it for the value because you just yeah you're like oh let, let's black light it and i could show you that there might be some pattern on it like no that doesn't work. yeah and even if you could prove it um you know it's you know people are paying that value not only for the genetics but for the yeah. visual stunning appeal so yeah. i'm so not so, so he's talking about Cypress being a must. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Cypress too is, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You man. got any Cypress, Jose? I, I don't. I have a male. I, I don't know what he is, but I'm leaning more towards like a so, Rio or Mahogany or something like that rather than anything. Rio like and Arroyo? Yeah, I like those. They're kind of like the extremist and... Yeah, things. but um, about the Cypress Celtic reptiles, um, oh, I sure. love Cypress, and I think that Cypress is definitely a must. But something that I think is a must in Cypress is honey. Now, don't get me wrong; I think they both have their own benefits with honey and without honey, or you can say with special or with phantom and without special or phantom. But that's the Cypress there. No, I don't. What I don't know. That? Chocolate. I'm. Oh, I'm okay. leaning, you know, that's I'm the one you more, don't know. I'm leaning more towards like a. It, it really looks like a real. The colors. Yeah. The hooking the and stuff. The floating alien heads. Yeah, the hooking off the. Yeah. This guy's a little asshole too. He'll. 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 So speaking about cypress and speaking about snakes that are assholes, maybe I'll get bit right here. This is one of my favorite snakes, and you're about to be blown away, Celtic. 
you see the the blushing on the head is is similar to like all these all these dark jeans all those the cypress mahogany stranger and i again i, I bought i bought this thing for i bought this thing another another steak together a hundred bucks see that's that's nice oh, let's let's give you the full screen here That's a, honey, that's a honey cypress, a hundred percent heck clown. The honey stripes it out. The honey stripes it out and really goldens the alien head pattern with the high white sides. It really increases the high whites. That's nice. Even throw some some alien floater heads right there. Yep. Some floating it's alien heads. Floating alien heads in there. I'm a, he says, I'm going to be taking a Cypress head clown to a Hurricane Yellow Belly clown. Cypress. That'll that's be nice. nice. That's so nice Cypress thing. on its own will lighten your clown combos. And mm -hmm. when you get honey into it like this here, it darkens the blacks, but it brightens the pattern still. So it doesn't take away from the coloration palette. It just adds to the contrast. And it also adds, I think, you know, to the striping, which is a big benefit. Let's 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 pull up some cypress here. So, so I got this. This is another snake like I was talking about knowing and seeing things yeah. and fa finding out, you know, later. Um, I bought this girl from Joe Kinney at Gulf Coast Exotics um, as a cypress heck clown. And yeah. Jeremy Bowd at Bob's Exotic Reptiles, who also lives in our area, he uh, he works specifically with the honey, like on its own in clown projects and stuff. So at the show, I fell in love with this animal. And I was like, the contrast and everything about it was just really amazing. And I loved the stripe, but it didn't strike me at the time like it usually would, as far yeah. as like, oh, that snake's got something extra in it. But... So 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 hold, hold that and and watch this, right? You can you can definitely see the difference between the one that you have and just a normal cypress here. Well, yeah. The 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 flaming the one, the flaming that on the one that you have is way different than this. So that one that one's actually pretty high stripe though. For the, a the design, yeah, the design yeah. of it looks pretty good. The yeah. design is very it doesn't similar. have the high whites and uh, the, right. the greatest contrasting, but it's almost like a lower quality honey cypress, almost honestly, because of the striping. We can go to uh, there's this a one lot too. of so a lot of cypress has honey connected to it, but yeah, you can see that one doesn't have honey. Cypress is a striped morph. Right. This, yeah, and, yeah, and right, you it's can see the, the similarities. You can definitely see that the one that you have there is is definitely not um it's not the same. Yeah. So after I acquired this snake though, I messaged uh uh Jeremy Bowd and I was like, Hey, you know, um does this snake look like it has honey to you? Because I remembered that back in the day when Cypress had first came in, like from Africa, and I forget whose collection it came in through, but they looked like this. And it wasn't until a few years later that, you know, they, they figure out that, oh, well, this has two different morphs in it, and they're, they were just linked in the original animal. Oh, you see, she almost tried to bite me there. <laughs> the only reason I even caught it was because I was watching in the camera. <laughs> She's a little sneaky one, man. She like, she just doesn't seem aggressive, but she'll just come around and bite you. <laughs> All right, I'm putting her away. But yeah, she's one of my favorites, even for that little attitude she has. So when is she ready? In a year or so, we're putting a cypress heck clown to our butter inchy chocolate DG double heck clown hypo. Man, cypress heck clown. I need to get her into a lace clown project for sure. 
Well, that was a female you're holding, yeah? Female, yes. Yep. Yeah, most of my collection right now is females because I've invested. This is like the biggest investment that I've tried, that I've made. And I've, I've made attempts in the past to, you know, do something smaller. And I was younger and life got in the way. And, you know, I had a kid and I had to stop the venom extractions. And <laughs> uh, you said the, the polo game was weak. No, I had planned my kid though. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, yeah, things changed in life, and I didn't really get to invest until now. So right. now it's all in on my knowledge. But I'm, you know, I'm a single. I'm a single. I mean, I, you know, me and my his mom co-parent well, but like, I'm a single dad. Like as far as finances go, I'm a single father. So like, it's tough. And for me to invest the way that I want to invest up here, yeah. I have to do it by finding deals and by finding snakes that I'm, I'm getting a deal on because I can see something extra in it. And you know, that snake that I showed you just the spot nose in that one animal changes the value of that animal by like a thousand dollars the value of it so if i was to buy that animal with knowing that it had spot nose redhead mm -hmm. i would be paying probably two thousand dollars for that snake instead of the mm -hmm. 650 or something that i paid for it so but it's, that's it's, it's, how i'm able to save money and get better <laughs> animals and it's not that those animals are worth that low it's just that i'm finding the good deals and i'm i'm honest and i'm also the people are honest and they're like well i'm right. just not sure so if you get away with a better deal then you get about away with it but that that and that's the right way to sell it right because yeah. one, you're taking a gamble whether it is or is is not you see what you see however it could also still be not but ultimately that's i mean I, we've talked as well. I'm in. I'm in the same boat. I went through the same thing. I, I, yeah. I mean, and this is this is Marf market. Marf market is littered with yeah. snakes that are either mislabeled or under labeled or over labeled. I've seen snakes over labeled. Where yeah, it's like, yeah. True. It's got this and that, but not this. That says yeah. it. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> clearly not that more yeah. under. Yeah. So That's it goes a, every way and you have to know and you have to be able to watch and if you're not sure look it up but that, that is another another topic that i'm i will cover on this on um on my channel is um it's a whole idea like you see a lot of people like flawless for example him and his wife and they have kids and everything's working cohesively within their within their family unit but there's a lot of there's a lot of it, it's hard for that to happen so i want I'm, i want to do a whole segment on um on balancing your supportive partners versus non-supportive partners and how oh, that, okay. yeah how, having a supportive partner is definitely and how big that is right because i, I too am a single dad my daughter's grown already but um I'm a single dad as well, so I know I know how it goes, right? I've yeah. raised her since she was 12 on my own, so it's difficult. But um, yeah, nice. So he says Celtics has lace or special. Oof. Yes, well, both. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, you know, we're talking about what Justin's showing off those it's, special it's, lace, yeah, Cypress clown combos and stuff, man. That's like I want to get right into that. It's so, not over, it's and. Yeah, so um, <laughs> my buddy's proved, he's breeding his uh, white lace to a lot of stuff right now. So I'm going to be getting some lace stuff. <laughs> some nice. some really good lace clown stuff, hopefully. And uh, I really want to get special in that mail. So special lace clown mail, something like along those lines. Uh, yeah, special, special is one that I was looking into getting into for the last couple of years as well. Special, I, I, I like the, so, but I have Trojan now, and I don't know, so I haven't seen a whole bunch done with Trojan, and I don't know how, what it does. I know it's a it's a color, 
kind of a, like a color altering morph, not necessarily a pattern disruptor. <clears throat> Lace Batman's friend of ours did his Lace Batman to a mojo something something. Don't know what he's keeping and or selling yet though. Nice. Spot nose lace is something that I would be a hundred percent interested in. I wouldn't I would probably personally myself stay away from the leopard, but spot nose lace from that pairing, heck clown, or spot nose lace clown. That that would be something that along my alley. <laughs> yeah, it should be mine too. Will yeah. and Audrey, they're, they're definitely good people. I was on I was on uh oh. Will's live on Sunday. Let's yeah, show this fire off. So this is another steal that I got off of Morph Market. My buddy that I got her from is probably watching right now. We became good friends. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, um, the, that's the beauty of the hobby. Yeah. So this girl here is our lace yellow belly, 100% het for clown. You can see all the popcorning. All the lacing around her alien has to get over in the camera. Nice. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that one before. You've shown them down gnomes. That the, yeah. the popcorn in at the belly is, yeah, nice. So that was one thing that we were unsure of. So I got her. I originally bought her. I was looking for lace, uh, heck clown female specifically. And my buddy at Morphed Out Reptiles, he uh, had this little girl on Morph Market listed up as a yellow belly heck clown possible lace. And it was one of those things that I was, I've been looking for lace all day. I've been looking at lace in person at Jeremy's house. Yeah. I literally left Jeremy's house and went on Morph Market and that's when I found this. So the thumbnail stood out to me. I was like, damn, that's a really nice looking lace. Mm -hmm. And then when I clicked on it, it said yellow belly possible lace. And I'm like, I think that's a lace possible that's yellow over. belly. I think that's <laughs> backwards. So that I bought her right away and I just talked with Justin at, over at uh, Canova and I, you know, just consulted yeah, with him. Yeah doesn't doesn't quite do that to the bottom it does some of it but not to that degree yeah i i talked to him and he said uh you know with belly photos and everything yeah he said yeah 100 percent lace yellow belly nice so you can see the yellow belly checkering and bleeding the the the, the flaming down into the belly there yeah but you can, that, yeah. that lace is making the popcorn and jump mm -hmm and spread across here let's do this hold on there we go hey mission i did i did watch that video i saw him shout him out i was like good looking out good looking out and then the lace is also she's young she's very small but you can see like across the top of there how the lace is whitening all oh, yeah. the way around the borders of all the alien heads that's going to increase as she gets older so that's another reason why it was really hard for you know anybody to really tell 100 percent what she was but um you know after just some discussions with the lace god of canova over there he definitely was like yep these are the reasons why so these popcornings this little white popcorn right there in the flames on your standard yellow belly those wouldn't be as stark white those would actually have tan coloration in them like there, the white popcorn <laughs> so those wouldn't be as white and along with the lacing of the white all the way around the entire tan uh pattern so those are those are two things that really stood out and then obviously just the bridging of the popcorn along the stomach it really yeah. busts up the yellow belly checkering and that's why i was like that looks that looks lace possible yellow belly <laughs> and and that popcorn in is oops that popcorn is huge right it's 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 kind of the the big hallmark of of the um, lacing. the popcorning yes and then also that lacing the white outlining that's huge because here is a normal yellow belly 
<laughs> and you can see it's very similar, but you can see the tan coloration in the popcorning. It's not white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can still even see there's some of that white lacing around the pattern of a yellow belly because that's kind of one of their traits. So that mm -hmm. makes it extremely difficult to identify. But flipping over to the belly, you see the difference? It's just completely checkered and blown out. It's way more busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way more busy. And look at it, it's all tan, all tan popcorning, no white popcorning at all. Yeah. So this is actually my yellow belly male possible uh, double head clown pie or clown sunset. Sorry. Nice. He's in, he's in shed right now, but eh, I might not even. He might be. I got him in a pair purchase, so he might even be a male that I upgrade before even utilizing him. He might even end up for sale here soon. I'm gonna get him tested first though. So he's 66 percent double head. Uh, uh, sunset clown. Nice. But that Six could eight. also be a reason why he has the higher white outlining and uh, better overall coloration because he's also double head potentially. The the head influences for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it, you get tagged on your left hand. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna watch the replay and clip that part that was awesome <laughs> no literally that's the personality of snake like different snakes like i can hold certain snakes and i know their personalities like i knew taking her out that she's like that you said the, the sunset can brighten brighten the known gene yeah for sure sunset can brighten but it needs help um sunset is um You've seen the prices fall, and that's because now with the revelations of Sunset, of Hypo and Cypress, you know, Hypo, Cypress, Spotnos, Sunset, that was just produced uh, by Brock Wagner or someone like that. Um, like, that really progresses this project to where we're seeing where we want to be with it for it to produce desirable animals. So, you know, market you know wide desirable mm -hmm. um not just like project specific so a lot of people across the spectrum go wow that cypress hypo spot nose sunset is an amazing and a lot of people also say that that sunset puzzle is amazing so sunset clown is also another amazing one because clown lightens up the morph in itself so i have sunset I have Sunset because I think that there's untapped potential through the roof with it. And because people didn't like it for so many years. And now we're seeing all of these things created that are, you know, worth getting into it. It's I, I view it as more of an entry level morph now, you know, but it's still at the high end. It's still at that untapped potential phase, which is why they're twenty five hundred. 3,500 for single and double gene combos with Sunset, you know? So yeah. if you want to invest in something that's progressive, you know, that's where you got to choose your niche. And I have like six of niches, so. <laughs> <laughs> but so, okay, so one of them. you have a lot of, you have a lot of recessives. Yeah, you it's like it. seven. Yeah, so anyway, Celtic. Spicy snakes are the best eaters. Yeah, the and they're yeah. the best breeders too. If you can keep yeah. your male spicy, <laughs> your male's probably gonna be a better, better breeder than one they're, that wants to come cuddle with you. They'll eat the paint off your walls. Here, let's see if anybody can hear him. <laughs> you hear him hissing? No, I don't know. I can't. I can't hear him too well. No, probably not. But he's a little hisser. So this is my cinnamon sunset, sixty-six percent possible hat clown. And uh, this guy, we plan on getting into some ultramel stuff. And something that I'm really interested in that I don't see people doing yet 
that I'm going to go for, and I'm going to be going for this next season, is double hat um, sunset genetic stripes. So I'm going to take this to the genetic stripe. I'm going to take sunset to the genetic stripe, which I don't think anybody's even thinking about yet, because no, I yeah. think a lot of people see it as a dead end project potential, but I see it as what if we can create this amazing two-tone snake that's just two tones top and bottom across the whole way that that glows you know like a hypo ultramel you know hypo ultramel sunset genetic stripe there you that's go, basically where my head goes is like let's try to work towards that and see what we can create as far as like a true sunset snake look at this, look at this sunset clown so i haven't i haven't even really seen yeah, some of that vanilla sunset GHI, and that's going to be nice too. Man, that that vanilla brightening it up. Yeah, you can use your disco for all that too. Yeah, that that. So I do but like this guy's possible yellow belly. Also, I think he is yellow belly because you can see like the little extra hooks and stuff coming off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pattern, and then if I can get him in decent lighting here. You can see um, down his sides, his pattern kind of drops here and there. Yeah, that's a, that probably that cinnamon influence that, that really uh, brings up the sides that way. Yeah, because every on a normal cinnamon sunset, every alien head is floating. Yeah. He's got the Y at the end of the next stripe. But we're going to end up getting the cinnamon sunset into some ultramel hypo stuff. So that way we can really brighten it up. And uh, they, and then we're going to take that. They, I'm going to take a genetic stripe first season. Nice. So so what I would like to see with that, which which happened a little with this with this clown that I see, is the contrast. Something. Yeah. So, so that cinnamon right there. Be cinnamon being kind of similar to that color, that that copper tone. Fading. Throw throw something with contrast into that thing, and it'll look nuts. Yeah. Um, if it has yellow belly, then it has greater contrast <laughs> than it would yeah, without it. Color would be nice, yeah. So. As far as contrast goes, my favorite gene for adding contrast, my favorite morph for adding contrast into a snake is honey. So um, I'm going to probably work honey into that as far as contrasting, because that's where everybody wants this project to go, is, is we want the pattern to pop and be more apparent and, and the color to be more exaggerated. So. Look this at, is a darker example in itself because it's got the cinnamon already. But I said, if a single gene sunset already has that darker browner tone, why not get something that's only going to be better with that? You know, right? Um, I don't go for like I'm going to take this dirty brown snake and I'm going to turn it into something amazing without right. without an idea in my head. You know, so. Check that yeah, out. Yeah, that's the Cypress Spot Nose Hypo Sunset, right? No, uh, instead of Spot Nose, it's Mojave. Sunset Hypo Mojave. Okay, okay, yeah. Cypress. But that, that's crazy. So so yeah. the Hypo hypo reacting with the Sunset is crazy. Yeah, Hypo was one of the first recessives put into the Sunset. So we know that that's... We know this, the Hypo Sunset is good, but the Hypo Sunset isn't that. What's making that is the Mojave Cypress. The Mojave is really reducing the pattern and I think defining it, especially with the alien heads, how they're a single round with a single eye. And then the Cypress is really making that pattern or that coloration. No Cypress. No, Cypress. Um, no? Oh, Sunset Mojave Hypo. Okay. So yeah. yeah, that's all coloration contrast with the Mojave on top yeah. of the Hypo. Yeah. It's the it's the okay. Mojave and then and then the hypo, it, it's just it's it's a nice blend of all all those three. I would it just, have to it, say I would have to ask what the pairing was. 
I want to yeah, know if that's got a spot in it. That like, thing looks right. crazy. <laughs> I, I'm, just that right there. I'm like, yeah, I'll jump into the to the sunset. What, what I didn't like in the sunset exactly is that it kind of rolled out. Exactly, mission. You got to go for contrast and appearance yes. with the dark morphs and mutations. H and the only thing to do that is to lighten them. HRA might be nice with this. But but so, HRA is kind of like... um. HRA will, Pat Red Exanthic will um, bolden the pattern for sure. I'll show you yeah. what I mean by that. Even, or um, even, even Blackhead. Uh, Blackhead, I think, would actually hurt it. Because so. Blackhead reduces the alien heads. And I think that Sunset reduces the alien heads. So if you do two, mm -hmm. it would have like no alien heads. Two, two reduction, two reductive. Yeah, that would make the alien heads practically either washed out or, you know, nearly invisible. So this is Hat Red Exanthic with Fire and Clown. Yeah, that's a nice one. So the Hat Red Exanthic adds all of the black lining around all of everything, and it really smoothens out the, the, the coloration and the normal... Um, pixelation that the fire adds usually uh the het red exanthic cleans up a lot of that pixelation and kind of condenses it to the the portholes in between the pattern or the flames in between the pattern those get really grainy it kind of it kind of starts looking like the uh like the yellow belly uh yeah what yellow belly does to it yeah it, it honestly looks like um yellow belly red stripe clown but it's yep. not. Yep. So I'm, you can I'm, see on the belly. You can see on the belly there. It's not overblown checkering or anything. Yeah, it's clean. It's like the yellow belly would add. Mm -hmm. So it's almost similar to a lot of different combos, but it's just a two gene stack, which, in my opinion, that's important. So if you have three genes, three morphs that are stacked into one snake that create one look, but you can achieve that look with a two morph combo. Now I feel like you can utilize the two morph combo that acts similar to create more combos that don't wash out as easy because we've yeah. seen in the past, the more stacked you get into morphs, the more washing out you get, especially down the second half of the body of the snake. So if I can use this animal in my combos, Het Red Exanthic Fire Clown, or use Het Red Exanthic in my combos to get the same effects as a yellow belly and a special, because that's almost like a yellow belly special fire clown. Um, right. Then I can basically eliminate, you know, one of those morphs or two of those morphs out of the stack of genes that I could be putting into other combos that could potentially wash it out. Yeah, and, you, and you're achieving a lot of the same same results with, yeah, with just two, three genes. I mean, look at this head. Let's see if I can get it. Turn Tracy. that way. Up. How's it going, Tracy? Thanks for joining. Yeah, that, that head is us. I even like the so around the eyes you get even that mascara even with this with this. Yeah, color. he gets the light. Yeah, he gets the dark edging around everything on the body. Every inch of pattern gets that light vinay or that dark vinay. So I'm really excited to get Het Red Exantic worked into a lot of other combos. As you can see down the side of them there, it just chains in the pattern and it blows out that the bottom flames. Hey, just, what do you think? What do you think about the super red stripe? What is it called? The red star or something? The... Uh, I don't know what the coin nickname is for it, but super red stripe is to me, I think a lot of super combos are a must to start looking into. Um, everybody's been working with single genes single gene codoms for so long that you know we can keep going uh single gene codom combos into a bunch of recessives and we can go super 
codom plus other codoms. But what about, you know, supers on top of supers? Super now, one. yeah, like Justin had a super entry super vanilla pied that he posted recently that damn near looked hypo. And it didn't have no, nothing hypo in it. But it was the stack of the two lightning morphs yep. that creamed it out, you know? And I was like, wow, that's a nice pied. But it, it also reassured my intuition of if I want to be on the level of the big guys, I got to start looking at supers and supers and stacking supers because now that's going to be the new game. If right. you know, we're still going to be stacking recessives, but you know, in order to stack two visual recessives, it's the same to stack two um, double supers. So genetically and value-wise, a double super is going to hold value just like a double visual recessive. As long as the combo warrants it, you know. So, Justin joined. What's up, Justin? Snake Bros. We were just we, we were just talking about you earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm trying to go even the same route too. Like, how many how many supers can can we stack? Yeah, and in the past, you know, everybody was stacking supers on top of super pastel. You know, Super Enchi, Super Pastel, and then Clown, and then Super Enchi, Super pa or Super Enchi Pastel, Super Blackhead, and like, you know, a lot of supers ended up with White Snakes. You know, Super Fires and Super yeah. Mojave Lessers, and a lot of people moved away from supers because they're like, oh, all these things are creating undesirable snakes. Well, now we have so many codoms in in this market that. You know, Super Redhead, Super Trident just got proven by Miguel. Uh, Super Trident's one of my favorite morphs. Like, Trident in itself is one of my favorite morphs now, like, yep. recent, in recent times. I almost got um, his spot nose Trident female that he had available when <laughs> I was buying Comet, when I was buying uh, the Triple Het Mail. So, yeah. I was thinking about it, but I didn't. I waited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as in. So I, the, the one the one thing I don't like about these these ALS is you can't make you can't make super vanilla super disco. Right, you you you're always gonna make the disco cream with that combo. So yeah. I I want that's why I want to so I have to pick and choose one of the two one of the two right. It's either gonna be super disco or super vanilla, and I want to go with the super disco. Yeah. <clears throat> so so this year what what do you got going charlie what's up this year thanks for joining sir you yeah. me this year what's your, right, what's so, your going on this year? so this year we're going to be pairing immediately she comes in tuesday but we're gonna take bob boo's pro tip in this like straight effect he just got the pastel exanthic desert ghost clown from Tinling that he won yeah. for seventy five thousand. So you know he took that snake home and in the quarantine rack he paired her up. He's like, "Yep, you're getting paired immediately." And <laughs> uh, he posted it and he's like, "You know, pro tip: How do you pair a snake in quarantine? Well, you put the breeder that you want to pair it to in quarantine with it, and then you just quarantine them both." while they're while they're breeding so you know no. um we got her from rice reptiles in canova so there's no issues there and then the other male came from another trusted breeder so we're going to quarantine them together and uh that's going to be that's going to be the super red stripe leopard yellow belly clown to the pastel calico and she spot nose heck clown so so, so you, have, weren't, you weren't you weren't even thinking about being able to breed this year no we didn't even i didn't have a plan on putting eggs on the ground this year at all just because um, my my plan is to enter the market right now because it's a good time and get yep. the deals and get established and get my name out there and kind of take leviathan's advice on their page where they're making all their business oriented videos and you know, I yep. take little little pieces of their advice, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I might not be breeding right now, but let's start telling people about me because I do right. talk to the big guys. I am, you know, I am in the know as far as 
people go that are important to me and I want more important I want more people to know about me because when I do start making these animals um, and people see me I don't want them to go who the heck is this guy I want them to go hey I've been waiting for that pairing and I can't wait to see what clut you know what you cut out of the clutch when I do lives on YouTube <laughs> But, that, but it, that's why I started as well. So so we can get into even the market at this point, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not, we're in the same boat. You're, you're ahead of me as far as buying your snakes. And I am I have other things that I'm doing right now within the reptile community that um, I'm focusing more on than, and I'll, I'll just breed the snakes that I have and then expand Yeah. sometime in 2024, a little, a little more. But um, as far as the, what they say to do in a market now, right? We're in a down market. It, that's no secret. It's it's similar to you could even go. Um, well, now you got to be careful because it's scaling up. So be careful now because some people are increasing prices back. Like some things are going back up because market's low on them, and if it, it is something available, the demand is high. So. Sure, sure. You do it's, have to watch the market right now. But yes, it's been a down yeah. market, I agree. Well, and, and you look at the down market as far as like, okay, we're, we're coming on the on the bottom end of the whole COVID craze, right? And now, yeah, I mean, and you, you actually don't see it as much now where people are just selling collections left and right, just trying to unload their collections. And and now, I don't know, it's, it's probably sold out now. And, and we probably hit the bottom. Who knows when? But I don't think we're. It's getting any lower. Whatever. No, I think that, like I said, I think we're scaling back up now. Um, and it's all an uptick. We're seeing an uptick from taxes and tax season, obviously. So that, that's the other part that's kicking in right now. Yeah. But you're also seeing the excitement of hatchling season. So. We know that this season and this year is going to be pretty epic. We've already seen some things, you know, from Canova and from, you know, uh, Miguel and um, from Billy and other guys. Like, they're hitting some awesome new stuff, some world firsts. So every year that we hit world firsts yeah. that are that are eye-catching and that are viral, yeah. that just helps the market, you know. it's It's getting people interested again. It's making people now look up how much is a spot nose cypress yeah. at clown because I need yeah. those two morphs and I don't have those. And I need to make this snake that he just showed off because that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And, you know, I even get that way a little bit. And that's what makes that's what drives us in this hobby and gives us more passion is seeing those new things created. So so, so let's requalify that statement that it's a down market for low end animals the high-end animals that right now people people are looking right if if you if i'm going to invest in something it's going to be something good it's going to be something worth investing in and it's it's always going to be those higher end animals or these low-end animals just move them like what like i put a, a breeder pastel female i don't even care what she sold for she sold for 10 bucks yeah plus shipping I, I it doesn't matter just I, well, I want it depends what level you are too so like sure yeah low end for somebody with a collection that they could afford could be different than my low end so my low end could be possible triple heads or something like that and someone else's low end is a possible head so but, I, everybody but, has to gauge their own market for their own animals for sure but but low end we're talking about in a general sense uh your single double jeans and, and you could even go as far as like a single common recessive right like um yeah clown or pied or spot nose head clown or ju just a, a simple simple snake right that's that's bare minimum in the general sense as the low end right that's like stuff you could buy even at a pet store right yeah Not selling, they're even having trouble selling them at the pet store and they're sitting there but it, it, for that market, yeah, it's tough because everyone's looking up. Everyone mm -hmm. now, again, to your point, they have you have tax season. They have they have a little extra money now, and everything's coming up. 
And like Billy was saying, with like tier breeding, like tier one, tier two, and tier three in the video, you you know, the interview you had with him, you know, tier one is pet level. And if you want to breed for pet level, um, you know, always try to have a goal. Always try to have something you're reaching for or else you lose the passion and you'll lose yep. it real fast. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where you know, people weed themselves out of this business and we don't have to worry about that. If we are focused on progressing, <clears throat> progressing through our thoughts, you know, if I'm progressing through someone else's thoughts, then it, once that person stops giving me ideas, my passion dies. But if I'm progressing through my own thoughts because I have a true passion for it, I'm never, it's never going to die. Like I spent seven years in green tree pythons, but I came back. And I was like, oh, I'm never going to go to ball pythons again because I'm like, green tree pythons all the way. <laughs> What's up, Anna? How's um, it going? Yeah. But, you and know, even after seven years, I'm like, man, COVID, I was like, I didn't get into COVID or nothing, but I was like, some cool stuff was coming out. And I was okay. like, man, I need to get back into ball pythons. <laughs> <laughs> and I started slow, slowly, and I didn't even get into them even in COVID either, just just after COVID, no, I mean, it, it was still COVID when I started stacking and, and getting my, this collection that I have now, but, and, and ball game, you, you get what you can get and build. And then right. The next one, just like uh Celtic said, you, you, you sell some lower end stuff and however you want to do it, save or whatever to get something, something in the future that you're going to, that's going to progress your collection. That's, that's so my the game. thought process on investing with <clears throat> limited funds is a lot of people will give you contrasting advice, and this is going to contrast a lot of other people's advice. Um, a lot of people will tell you uh, if you have limited funds to, you know, get a few females, and get a powerful male and then you can spread the genetics of that powerful male through those few females and then you know that can progress you faster but in the contrasting sense because i did something way different myself and i shot i go for females first because my value doesn't sit in my collection in a male my value doesn't stay in my collection with a male. A male is going to be replaced. A male is going to eventually, you know, be replaced, whether it's going to be a, a son or whatever, you know, that's, that's planned. You know, we always plan to have a male that we're going to replace and a female is much harder to replace because if I have a heck clown female and she's breeder size and that female really in my type of collection holds not a lot of weight, but that one hat clown female, oh, I don't know what I was going to say, but, um, okay. So, so I'm going to play devil's advocate because I've, I I've heard both sides, of this, both sides of the story. So if, if you're heavily invested in your females, and, and I like both well, sides. One, what I was going to say, though, is that that one heck clown female only holds so much weight in my collection after the first year because I'm going to, or after the first two or to three years because I'm going to have genetic females that are better replacing her to size. And that is a minimum for an undesirable female in my collection to be replaced as minimum of three seasons, if not four seasons, because she's still going to produce animals that I want. It's just she might not be the exact combo that I have sitting in my racks raising up. But a male is going to be replaced potentially in eight months after he produces a clutch. So how I did it was I took my money and I invested in females slowly, but I invested into nice females because those females over a year of investing, okay, I can, you know, after a year, I can have say five really nice females because I took my time and I acquired them on payment plans or whatever. Now, those females are probably a year old, if younger, if not younger, 
and because I, you know, you can't get value at size on the low end. So your value in your females on the low end is going to be in babies. So in a year, the male that I just bought, that's epic to me because somebody told me to buy three whatever females and one epic male. That male is going to produce some cool babies for me. And then he'll get replaced in a year potentially with one yeah. of his offspring, potentially, depending on the pairing. And then I would have to put his, you know, replacement back to the same female. Or I'd have to invest and buy a different female to raise up. But then I would still only have that female. So why not make that female that you're stuck with something that you're going to obviously be able to keep utilizing, even if it's for other projects and not necessarily that one. And so if you invest into a few females over a year that are valuable in your own eyes for your projects by the time you've done that that male you wanted at the beginning of the year is probably a different one by then you probably want something else or you probably want one that's a little bit more stacked because the price of that one went down and you can afford a better male now so so I'll, and kg I'll, I'll, kg on that point kg said well get a male sooner so that you could make sure you have one to size which i totally agree with so maybe get a lower end male early on with your females to raise up but with the plan of already having a number one to purchase later on because you'll get a better male for the value a year later and then if that number one doesn't produce that you got a year later, then you have your backup still. So females first. Yeah, it, it just number two male, number one male, biggest investment. <laughs> hey, hey, Chuck, Chuck, don't sell all your males right away. He did last year. Short yeah, male. Short so, males is hard. Here's so. the other side of that story, right? Because what if your females don't go? What if what so you have you have a male if females don't go your male is, is I mean it's not necessarily wasted but he's it right? Let's well, say you got five females and all of them don't go. I mean that's gonna be shit. Not, not all of them don't go, but they don't go. But if if they you have, have a male, uh, and let's let's say the female that you're waiting to go, the the one that you really want to go and she doesn't go, um, it just and and, and then on top of it, females take way longer than males to grow yeah. where where even to his point you can you can get a male you can raise it and then you can buy breeder females for him but if what he breeder has, female are you going to get the quality of at, a, at say a thousand dollars ready to breed when you want to pop this male to her and then what are the chances that she's going to take like the, the chances that this female i'm getting from rice I mean, the chances on, on that she's going to take from me this year they're slim. I probably won't get a clutch on the ground this year. If I do, I'm entirely lucky. Yeah. Um, that's that's so, on either side. Yeah, that plays in the in the my side too. Um, if you have the value in your females, and then you invest in a better male later on, and you have a number two backup that you've been raising as a male already, now you got yourself a secondary game plan for your male, and then <laughs> on top of that, <laughs> on top of that. You know, your buddies might have a male that's a proven breeder. You don't got to worry about the male as much. But if you have your value in your females, now your friend might go, you know, your male's not proven, your, your male's not uh, breeding, um, but I really like that female. Let me toss this male to her. Let's do a joint pairing. Now, if you have a hat clown female, your buddy's going to be like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of... Yeah. So, so breeding, breeding loans come into bring that into a whole different perspective, right? Like yeah, so breeding I, loans I can be both. important in that aspect. Yeah, like if you don't have a male that's ready to go and your buddy does, that, that's a breeding loan that you're not losing from. Even if you don't get the best holdback out of that pairing, like you weren't going to breed that snake that year. So right, and I like I said I see I see both of them, and I I bought so. When I when I bought my male, again I, I have a male that I don't even think he's bred. I've never seen him breed. Yeah. But it, he wasn't my first male. But my first male was my clown because I wanted a visual clown so that I can make my hats. So mm -hmm. I bought my male, 
Spot nose ends up being disco. Cool. I'm all good with that. And then I bought my females around that male. So I bought females yeah. in, in certain things so then I can I can start line breeding some stuff down the road. But um yeah, it just it just all depends on on what everyone's everyone whoever whatever works for that program for that person. Yeah. Don't be afraid of payment plans, Banna. Most yeah. of them are done through Square app, like the Square payments. And typically they send you an invoice that has a date to be paid by and you make payments and increments at your own leisure during that time. And then if you aren't able to make the final payment by the date that it has on the invoice, they can extend it. All you have to do is reach out to the breeder and say, hey, I need another week. And most breeders are going to say, yeah, I want your money. I'll give you another week. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, as long as communication, whatever it is. people will work with you. Yeah, and they're not scary because they're done through a secure app or a secure site most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. And, and I went the route where I wanted to produce a lot of my a lot of my collections, so I didn't I didn't want to um I didn't want to go out there and, and buy a bunch of stuff because I didn't I didn't I wasn't even trying to grow that fast on the snake side anyway. So I yeah. I definitely controlled I don't think that was my plan really either. I was gonna <laughs> get more into it like kind of pet <laughs> projects and then I'm like Let's just do it. I need to get out of electrical. Oh. <laughs> hey, but, but okay, so, so let's get back to, you have seven recessives. Um, well, I have Sunset, Puzzle, Clown, Ultramel. Uh, I'll only count, I'll count Exanthic as one whole. Um, you have different lines of it. Exanthic, as that Hypo, yeah, I got VPI and Marcus Chain. Um, so Sense of Clown, Hypo, Ultramel, Puzzle, uh, Pie Ball. The Pie, Pie is the other one, the seventh one. Like everything, yeah. <laughs> everything. So you, you talk, so, and, and, and you talk I mean, about. I'm going into multiple recessive projects. So like, um. <laughs> Some things that I should be able to hit and within, you know, I should have odds to hit within three seasons are, you know, my end goals. I should be able to, I should be able to be into pairings for my end goals in three seasons, which those are going to be by, you know, the byproducts of those pairings are going to be just like incredibly stacked animals anyway. So it doesn't matter to me what I hit out of those pairings. It's more so I'm just hoping that I get what I want. So, so the sunset you're growing up, right? That's not going to be this season. He's a male. He's going to go next winter. What the? So that that one that I showed you on rice, I'll show I'll show you what he's breeding, uh, Banna. It's the uh, calico, right? The one this year, yeah. yeah. The one this year I'm going to be breeding. Well, we're pairing up um, the spot nose calico enchi pastel pet clown female that mm -hmm. I just got from Rice Reptiles to a super red stripe leopard clown, possible yellow belly. I'm pretty sure he's yellow belly. Which is, uh, I'll show, I'm pulling up the, um, the one but that the you got. Sunset, the sunset will be bred next winter. So not even a year, less than a year. Um, and I'm going to be putting him to a few different things. Uh, I'm probably going to put him. Yeah, I'm going to end up putting my sunset directly to my genetic stripe possible head hypo. I'll have her tested by then. Um, I'm hoping that she's head hypo and then I can get some possible triple hats for that project because that's a vision I have. I don't think anybody else. I've never heard anybody else with that vision of the genetic stripe sunset but um for this one i'm gonna i'm gonna get that worked into the clown side genetic stripe sunset clown eventually but my vision right now is for the sunset but that there is the calico and she spot nose pastel head clown female that's going to be paired to the super red stripe leopard probably yellow belly male so we're going to get um uh hopefully a good clutch from her this season 
And if that everything goes well, all the babies will be red stripe clown or red stripe pet clown at minimum. And then they'll share a combination of all those morphs and genetics. Uh, the combination that I would be most looking forward to out of this pairing to hopefully hit is going to be the spot nose, leopard, calico, um, spot nose, leopard, calico, pastel, um, redhead. Nice. And then I would yeah. also like to hit the non pastel version with the leopard. And the and reason so, why I want to hit the pastel version is because the calico overtakes the alien heads in the pastel version. Nice. And so, so are you team Monarch, team Ultramel? <laughs> you too, Celtic. Um, I, oh, I mean, no. He's team I Monarch. wanted to get into Monarch um, when I was searching around on Black Friday for deals. I almost got into Monarch, actually. But it would have only been a hat female, and then I would end up getting a hat mail pretty cheap but that was a lower end project for me and uh, not lower end as far as value because you know visual monarchs are pretty you know valuable still but um lower end as far as genetically speaking like i was just getting into like a single pastel monarch project and i was like ah let's find something more powerful so yeah. that's when i got into the visual ultra male pod project and then that's what I'm going to be. I'm, I'm undecided 100%, but I'm going to definitely be taking my sunset project one direction that way because I got the male sunset, so I can do a couple of different project directions with him, which is why if you're going to start up new projects, go yeah. with a visual male so that you can do a couple different project directions. And you're not just tunnel. You're not tunnel visioned into that female that you're stuck you know, with that project on and you only put one mail to her every year. So don't tunnel vision yourself in projects. Make sure your mails keep your options open. That's why the mail from Miguel was incredible. Like I can't even replace that mail in like three or four seasons. He's a triple hat desert ghost typo clown and he's got potentially five different codoms in him. Black he's definitely got four. Black pastel, chocolate, blackhead, leopard, and then possible redhead. So yeah, that male, I can't like the likelihood of me being able to replace a male like that in four seasons with odds is it's slim to none. Like that male might be in my collection for years and years. Yeah, I see some. So I, I'd go, I'd go, uh, I'd go ultra male. So maybe because I haven't seen enough, enough Monarch. Let me search. Go for it. This here is my ultra male female. Let's see. Yeah, see, she's nice. But it, it's it's when he starts stacking on that that things start getting crazy. I just love ultra male. I love so I love caramel. Um, but caramel females are infertile or they have issues with fertility. Yeah. So the next closest to that, I, in my opinion, would have been the Monarch. But the Monarch has darker, deeper purples than the Caramel. So I think, like, alien headwise, the Monarchs have more of the Caramel coloration. But um, in the Blacks, the, the, ultra, the ultra Mel has more of the Caramel coloration in the Blacks as yeah. far as the purples go. So this is almost like the in-between a caramel and a monarch you know so i think that the ultramel is the best of both worlds if i was going to get into the monarch project i would be looking for differences and it just wasn't right now the value wasn't there for me hey, how come how come i can't find any monarchs on on morph market because it's um it's an underworked project Oh, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You might oh. have your thing settings to yeah. the U.S. only. No, no. I was I was looking at a at a store. So here's 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 compare that to Monarch. That's a Monarch. Yeah, it's just a straight Monarch. I, yeah, I don't know about that lighting though. It's, it's a that's our that's a, a breeder. 
That's a light. That's a taken in the shade photo. <laughs> to make it darker. Let me, this let me look. Let me like make the snake look more contrasty. Yeah, that's better. That's much better there. You can see it's definitely darker in the purples, but that's a younger snake too. It's gonna lighten up. Right. This uh, this is a young one. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen that enough. Also got. That one's also pastel, yeah, I could tell. Yeah, this is not a string. Well, the one that you're holding there, what is it? This is just ultra male pet pied. All right, so let's let's look. So the with her pairing next season is going to be a hypo clown pet pied male, so that way I can get some. Uh, yeah, hypo clown hat pied. So that way I can get some visual pie balds, triple yeah, see, hat, so hypo the, ultra male clown. The one that you're holding there, the yellows will look better than the monarch on the screen. Just looks like a brighter. Let me think about that again. So I'm going to do a hypo clown hat pied to her. So that's going to give me some hopefully some visual pides that are going to be yeah triple hat hypo ultra male clown yep i did say that right yeah so that's what yeah. i'm trying to go with this project is hypo ultra male clown pides uh you know three four year project hopefully you know it all yeah. depends on odds you know if i have really bad odds it could be an eight to ten year project you never know <laughs> Yeah, you just have Sometimes you just have it You just don't know. So I speak in hopes. That's how I speak. If I if I say something, it's because I'm speaking with the confidence that I want it to happen. That's that's problem. That's all of us. So that's not just <laughs> we're all crossing our fingers, hoping. If hoping I say everything. something, it's because I think it's going to happen up here, and that's where everything starts. Yeah. If you don't have the vision up here, you're not going to create it. So. Don't be afraid to say things that, you know, they may not come true, but have confidence in yourself. And that's what I think is the most important. Indeed. So I'm going to pair this girl up and get eggs from her next winter. And we're going right. to get some, hopefully some pides with some triple hat hypo, hypo um, ultra clown. I do I do agree with, with Banna. After looking at some of these monarchs, I, I like the... Uh... I like that. I like the shading of the ultra male. It's on the brighter side. Not as. Yeah. Imagine, imagine adding no, no Celtic. Imagine adding disco to that. And another thing too, that I want to mention <laughs> is like, I bought that snake with no intentions of getting her into that type of project. Yeah. Yeah. I bought that snake and I'm like, you know, ultra male pies are awesome. I want to make some ultra male pies, but mm. I didn't have that plan. I just had the thought. And once I really kind of shaped everything together and started adding animals and, and really, cause my brain has so much information in it about this stuff that I can sit there and I can make myself, I can stutter myself up and, mess myself up a lot because I'm trying to think about too many things. So don't overwhelm yourself. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> genomic genomics likes your snakes. Thank you. Yeah. I trying to do the right thing and get some awesome stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm team ultra male. I'll have to check on KG. KG's live about the Ultramo Monarch stuff because I don't think I saw the comparisons or anything on there. But I, don't, I missed that one. I don't think they repost their lives. Oh, really? Dang. Good, good luck, sir. Good luck. <laughs> so one of my pairings that will happen next season that I'm really excited about doesn't include this snake, but this snake is part of the project. Yeah, he, she's my he, visual. He, she's my visual, so. I know he doesn't because they, they make it a point to they make it a point to say they they're not gonna post it live. Ooh, that's a puzzle. This pastel. is my pastel possible orange dream puzzle female. Nice. 
So next winter, um, she won't be the size, but I do have a uh, granite pet puzzle female that will be the size. And uh, we'll be pairing that granite pet puzzle female up next year to a uh, pastel and calico, possible fire, possible het red exanthic male. That's 100% het puzzle and 50% het lavender albino. I don't really care too much about the lavender albino part but um um and like Celt like celtic says we're always i mean if if you're not thinking about things that haven't been made you're just going with the you just you're just going with the flow like, but we're to gonna get this we're gonna get this and i know it's been i know that the pastel and chicago puzzle has been made and i love it so this guy also, I believe, definitely has fire, and I'm pretty positive he carries the Het Red Exanthic morph also. So this pairing will prove it out, though, because it'll be a Het-to-Het -het pairing. So I'll get a lot of single-gene animals and double-gene animals, and I'll be able to kind of decipher it better, hopefully, uh, especially seeing a fire, you know, fire combos and stuff outside of the uh, pastel calico. So... Pastel Calico Enchi Fire Het Red Exanthic is what I believe him to fully be. And he'll be paired to a granite Het Puzzle female. And he's a pet puzzle. So it'll be a Het to Het pairing. And I'll be going for some... I think she's going to prove out to be a genetic granite. But she's wild. And even if the granite just passes on as a phenotype, it's going to make identification extremely hard in the pairing of, in the offspring because it's just going to bust everything up. So that guy, hopefully, uh, I really just hope to get some Calico, Enchi, uh, Het Red Exanthic puzzles out of this pairing. Fire would be cool. I don't know how good that's going to work in puzzle, but... You'll see. Yeah. Monarch, I think, is just expensive because of the supply and demand. Like, yeah, that's what you're saying. It's definitely the supply and demand. They, they, they've kept supply low on purpose to keep it. That's what I think, anyway. To keep it that way. To keep the prices high. A, a chase. When's, when's the Denver show? What day? I, I was supposed to be at the Sacramento show next month but uh my daughter my daughter's uh i have to drive back with my daughter at the end of april so i got hey, this girl from bowds exotic reptiles has a zebra puzzle been made banda doesn't think so no i don't think so either you'd have zebra. to get double heads i don't even i mm -hmm. don't even know if i've heard of anybody with double heads yeah zebra is super super or relative but new anyway yeah, I mean, the top guys might have some double heads hiding in their yeah. racks, you know, and they're not going to tell anybody until they produce it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're not going to tell anybody. So, yeah, she's one of, she's my only visual puzzle. Picking I'm really hoping that uh, I can get her up to size for two seasons from now. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know that I'm I know that my buddy's breeding some sunset puzzle stuff right now, so I'm gonna end up getting into the sunset puzzle game. How do you think that's gonna work? You, th you think you think puzzle's gonna lighten it up? Puzzle and sunset, right? Been made. Has it? Yeah, it was just revealed um, before Tinley. I think it was. Oh. I think I you're talking remember. about. I can't remember what show it was, but it was revealed this year. Uh, the sunset puzzle. Okay. It's amazing. It brightened it up entirely, and I think, uh, you know, like I said, sunset is to me an entry. It's a base morph, in my opinion. So, and the price is reflecting that over time. Just like Pied right. and just like Clown, it's going to become. You know, one of those morphs that we see all the time, and it's going to be in a pet shop eventually for $400, $500, but it's not there yet. And that's because 
we haven't done enough with it and we can we know that the potential's there so that's why the value of sunset is still up around two three grand for you know single gene and two gene combos yeah so i hey uh chase that's a that's exactly the weekend that i'm going i'm not gonna be here i get back on the 28th what is it it's the a show when <laughs> The, the Denver show, the 20, April 26th to the 28th. Okay. My daughter's coming back from, from Canada. So I'm going to fly up there because she has a car. We drove up there. So I'm coming back with her. That's awesome. What kind of project are you going to do with the pastel anti-chocolate hypo female? Yeah, what are, you, what are you putting it to? Oh, nice. Ball game. Are you going to be there? Hmm. I wonder. So this is my chocolate girl. That's a good, yeah, that's a good looking team too. Brock Wagner. He had it at the Timmy. Oh, yeah, Brock Wagner. Yeah. He's got the Beats by Dre. She's got the Beats by Dre earmarks. Ah, <laughs> nice. On both sides. <laughs> I'm but she's I'm she's my bit. chocolate double hat uh, DG clown. Nice. Let's see, Brock, Brock Wagner. So this is another girl. Uh, next season is um, really going to be, so next season I'm going to have probably, I'm hoping six females, six or seven females going. The year after I, that is going to be my entire collection, pretty much. <laughs> oh, he doesn't, he doesn't have it posted on his, on his Instagram. Oh. Is it? So with this girl, I'll be going for some you know chocolate clown combos i'll probably get spot nose into that pairing with redhead so um maybe some blackhead yeah i'll probably so i can tell you right now that uh a male in this girl's future is probably gonna be mm, right now it's the triple hat male for sure i mean that was the plan for her already was the uh, blackhead, black pastel, chocolate leopard, redhead, triple hat male. But she's double hat. Dang. So I'll be going for double visual desert ghosts. I'll be for with her to the, the male from Miguel. I'll be going for double visual DG clown. Um, you know, if he passes on the copy of Chocolate and she passes on Chocolate, I could potentially get Super Chocolate Clown Combos, DG Clown Combos. I could get uh, Chocolate Blackhead DG Clown Combos, um, you know, Chocolate Blackhead Redhead Leopard Black Pastel Leopard whatever. <laughs> Just keep rambling. Double Hold the visuals um yeah it's just an endless supply of possibilities when you do pairings like this um you know especially a male like that he's got potentially he's got guaranteed four codoms and three recessives and she's a single codom with two recessives but he'll always pass on blackhead or chocolate so him paired to her i'll either get blackheads or I'll get super chocolates. I'll get nice. blackheads by themselves. I'll get blackhead chocolates or I'll get super chocolates because I'll never get, uh, or I could get a single gene chocolate if she doesn't pass it on. And if yeah. it doesn't, you know, from the male, but the potential is there for single gene blackheads, blackhead chocolate, single gene chocolate and super chocolate desert ghost clown combos with redhead black pastel and leopard all in the mix just from this one female and that's why i was saying like you invest in a decent female and then you get a male that's a powerhouse and if two of those females go if two of my females in my first season because you know if i get that one parent to go this year it's just a bonus for me and if you know, my first season, I have seven females that should go. If I can get even just one of those females to go, the pairings are going to be so packed because the males are going to be so packed that, you know, this female, 
I mean, don't get me wrong, she's double hat, but say she was just hat clown, say just chocolate hat clown, that would make her a more, you know, uh, easier snake to afford. Um, think double hat, she's like a $1,600 snake. But with just a single hat, she'd probably be like an $800 snake or a $600 snake, something around there off the top of my head. But yeah, you get a $600 chocolate hat clown female, and then you get a, I know you can go on Mark Market right now, and you can get a triple hat, you know, a triple hat male of some kind for $600. Bucks. Um, and he won't be super gene-packed codominantly, but he might have like, a pastel and a leopard or like a spot nose and something, you know, and she, mm. and, you know, you might get a couple jeans and a male with like a triple or double hat for under a grand. And that male is irreplaceable for you throughout the years because of those triples, you know, and those doubles right. in the males, because yeah, I might take that male that has say he's a leopard and she double hat chocolate hypo or a double hat um, clown hypo. And then I put him to a female like her that would just be heck clown, chocolate heck clown. Now I can get pastel inchy chocolate clowns, possible hat hypo. Yeah. And then uh, I can now I can save some females and now he's still gonna be utilized because I can breed him back to one of those females in the future that proves out through testing to be double het. And I can get double visuals and then take the double visual into totally different projects to now spread the genetics out because I had to, you know, basically inbreed for a season to get the double visuals. So I don't want to continue that in my collection. I want to now take that into projects. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Hey, Celtic, a vanilla cream is a vanilla uh, fire. That's That's going to be a nice one to take right back to that female. Vanilla cream hypo clown to the chocolate ha hypo, yeah. So this, to this one. So you're gonna get all fire or vanilla chocolates, and possibly hypo versions. So vanilla, vanilla or fire, if it's fire, oh, either one. Also, with, with everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So vanilla or fire with pastel and chocolate hypo, potentially. Super edgy elbow, double head clown pied, high intensity OD clown, leopard clown pied. That, that's a nice now, Jose, was it you that was talking to me about the deep orange line of OD and the high intensity line of OD? No, who, who was talking about it? Uh, I so can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a deep orange line that's been yes. tested in proven i guess and then there's the high intensity line i don't they know have, if they've been tested and proven but i know that they're visual no, they're, they're currently i think they're currently testing that that uh deep orange line the deep one yeah the high intensity has yeah. been proven to be different but um yeah orange dream to me it's they're screwing it all up <laughs> not not like in a bad way not in a yeah. bad way or anything but like how the DG thing got kind of screwed up or like we were able to test for A and B, but really only C matters and stuff like that. Yeah. And we, you know, a lot of animals were sold as non het because they only had A or B and they could have been hats, things like that. And it's like, all right, well, I think my personal opinion is don't talk too much on the subject until you know it for more information sometimes. Because that ruined a lot of people's businesses and and, and investments in their genetics at the time, right. when, and and it didn't, and it didn't actually kill anything. It didn't hurt anything because more than likely all of those snakes were hat. Yeah. So, so I I had one. Just killed the market that, is all it did. Yeah, I had one that I sent in. It was uh, my leopard, uh, leopard red stripe, double head clown DG. But yeah. he was, um, I think he was possible DG. I sent him the shadow when they first, even before they released uh, the DG test, it let me know that it's not 100%. So I said, that's fine. So I sent it out. And they came back that it was he was hit for A and B. And they, and they marked it as a visual DG. 
I'm like, no, no, he's not a visual DG. I 100% yeah. guarantee you he is not a hundred. He's not visual. But they said, well, based on this, he's visual. I'm like, yeah, that's that's. So then they started getting people doing that. Get more information they, back. They went back and did it. So then that's when they started testing for a a different gene um, within DG, and then they found C, right? C, okay. So then I sent I sent my shed back in, and he's had DGC. So I so, think though what happens though is DGA and DGB. I think they're linkers. I think they're they're piggybackers basically. Yeah. So. I don't know specifically or anything. This is just my thought, but they're like piggybackers where it's like if you have, say, a visual DG and it's just DGC, you know, visual DGC, no DGA or B, that's probably going to be the best looking version. And then not saying it is, but just in theory. And then if you have a piggybacker like A or B on there, it's going to change that phenotype slightly, kind of like how in pastels. I bet you. I would be interested to see in a line of pastels how many different variables there are. Because yeah. if you have the phenotype differences that you can actually pinpoint like that, maybe that's all that they are is phenotypical differences that are genetically linked. So like how some pastels are really dirty and some pastels yeah. are really bright, it's kind of yeah. like the same link between, you know, high intensity on orange dream and deep orange. Yeah. It's like Brown pastel and actual pastel. <laughs> so, Celtic, I don't work with banana. Do you work with? You have you have banana? I have a good amount of banana in the collection um, for my son mainly, but uh, my son was the one that brought it into the collection. He turns seven tomorrow, nice. so Sweet let me show pepper. off a couple of his animals. <laughs> so, uh, green so, Shannon and Green Dragon. What? What was that? Go oh yeah, Gray Rider. Hi, Charlie. No, he said he said it's head or not. Yeah, I mean DGC head or not. That's what it was. I was just talking about what it was before before this whole yeah actual head came out when I got it tested. It was yeah, it was it was all confusing. And it says A or B are markers. What markers, are they? Yeah, like piggybackers basically, right? Yeah, and it says yeah for sure it's yeah, like. Like polygenics from line breeding. Okay, I'm, yeah. So I was pretty much hitting it on the head. Just line out. breeding does it. Yeah, line breeding goes a long way that people don't don't realize. So this is my son's first snake that he bought on his own accord by um, earning his allowance, <laughs> and I took him to his first reptile show, and yeah. he met Shannon at Green Dragon Brokers, and. He had um, he had fifty dollars that he earned, and I told him that I would match him. You know, so he had a hundred bucks. And uh, but Shannon was like, you know, Shannon just kind of took over as a salesman and just being a, a kid that's or a guy that's really great with kids. And he was like, "Oh, what are you doing, buddy? You know, what are you looking for?" And Lucas is like looking around his table, and he's like, "I like the that one." And he's like, "That's the banana." And he's like, "Yeah, the banana." And uh, Shannon ended up, this is a female banana het pie. That's actually better lighting there. Female banana het pie bald. And she's also got the fire gene in her. And Shannon had her um, priced half off already, but he ended up giving this female to Lucas for uh, $50, <laughs> which was the money that he earned on his own. So that meant a lot to me because that meant that this snake was completely earned by my son and I didn't help him. Nice. And then yeah, bananas are good looking thing. It's just, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm partial I, I to other things. Uh, I think rainbow is the replacement for banana in the future. Yeah. I agree. I've seen some, <laughs> I see some super nice rainbows. What's his name? Palumbo from a uh, Palumbo. Yeah. He's working the rainbow. Hey, you know, you know, he used to be a bodybuilder. Yep. He actually, yeah. he, he actually lives. How far does he live from you? Um, three hours. Nice. Not not far. And uh, tinsel. Tinsel is my son's other snake. Well, one of my son's other snakes. 
So this one here is actually more special than we thought it was because I helped. So this, this story behind this is really special because uh, Shannon produced this one also. And the reason why my son ended up with this one was because Shannon wanted to gift him a snake um, for Christmas as a Christmas gift. So we drove all the way to like Orlando or Kissimmee and I helped Shannon identify and sex this clutch of babies. See if we can get that light to stop blowing it out. But I got, I helped him sex and identify this clutch of, of babies and he ended up giving, gifting one of my son's choice to him at the show. Oh, so that was really awesome. And this one here, I'm trying to get better lighting. I don't know if you can zoom in on it, maybe back here. But it's a Java, which is a mutation creation Canada morph, a Java banana pie bulb. And the Java just really increases all the purple in the saddles. But you can see, yeah, you can see the outline of the saddles being the, that purple. I mean, if this snake didn't have banana, those saddles would be just like saturated with black. But it makes the yellow pattern really pop also. It's just hard with the lighting. Sorry. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. I mean, you could tell the the problem with that is the the white background on the pipe throws off the. Yeah, it makes it really wanna. Yeah. It doesn't know. It doesn't know which one to pick up. <laughs> yeah, it wants to wash it out. Here, let's try this. Oh, there it is. Kind of. And that's that's almost yeah, right there, right there, right there. You can see it on the on the. The left side of the screen. <laughs> it's so hard to get a white snake to not <laughs> blow out the lighting. <laughs> but yeah, so he's excited about that. He can get some super banana java pied, super banana fire java pieds out of his first pairing. And that'll be a couple of years from now. But nice. He's only seven tomorrow. So his first pairing, he'll be nine years old. So he'll be about five years ahead of me. I think my first clutch of, was at 14 years old. So nice see i didn't but, i didn't even have snakes i had i had a uh, iguana so, so i had lizards when i was younger yeah i ended up not hatching it out myself i took it to a guy at a local pet shop that was a breeder at the time and i asked him to incubate for me because i didn't have an incubator i was gonna try maternal and then i was like mm, i don't know let's yeah. just take let's just take them over there so i want them to hatch and then i ended up hatching out uh, three normals because it was just a normal to normal pairing i was like 13 years old when i paired them up i was like yeah we're gonna do this <laughs> I guess I'm, like, I'm gonna be the next big breeder <laughs> what'd you get out of normals yeah just a couple of normals three normals hatched Nice. I ended up, the guy at the pet shop offered me, like, I think it was, like, at the time, like, 200 bucks for all three. So I was like, sure. Shit, at that, at that age, 200 bucks is quite a bit. Yeah, the money spoke louder than me going and taking snakes <laughs> home that I had to feed, and I didn't have a job yeah. yet, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and with Celtics, I, I, I do the same thing. If I was at a, if I was at a show and some, some a kid came up and was interested in, interested in reptiles, Man, I because it takes you back to your youth, right? You're like, oh, yeah. I wish someone would have done that for me when I was a little. Here you go. Yep. But. And instead of wholesaling animals, that's what you can do. Yeah, and and, and you don't if, you don't market it that way though, you know. But if you're right. vending a show and you got some animals that you would wholesale, and if somebody comes across the table and their kid's looking for a snake like my kid was cut him a deal like if the kids shop yeah. and be like oh is he shopping with his own money or her own money yeah be like well how much money that, that would be the best. if i seen that little kid come and he had he had some he had a little wad of cash his little wad of cash on his birthday money i'd act like i'm gonna charge him i wouldn't charge him i just i'd be like yeah no go ahead keep that money buy your supplies do whatever you need to do with that money i'll give you the snake no big deal yeah 
which is that, awesome. That, yeah, that that that's cool when when kids are when kids are that interested. Like I didn't I didn't have that growing up, and my parents would never. I was lucky yeah. to have an iguana. Oh, gotta get this stuff. This is snake hey, hooks. Wanna, Who'd you get that from? I had to buy my son his own snake hook. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that from? Uh, Cold blooded sensations. Uh, Angel, Angel, and uh, Angel Carl's making those too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just a red line science. Um, I just bought it through them, but they're they're, they're a sell, uh, they're a retailer of red line science products. Check out this guy or girl. I don't know what it is. Oh wow, that's really white. A lily white? Is it a, a lily white? I said it's yeah. really white. No, no, it's a it's a lily white though. Oh, okay. So is that something new for you? Yeah. So I got yeah. so I got one, one more coming tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, it can only be three of them. I see your cheeks turning red. You must love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> So, uh, like Those I said, the, awesome. is that one gonna get what color is it gonna get except for white? Well, it'll. It, so the the sides I, right now, I think it's fired up. So the sides get a little darker when it's not fired up. Okay. Um, but it's it, it'll. It, I think it'll get a little darker on the sides, but the white would stay. You you want it to stay as much white as possible. Yeah. This is a little. So little is that your little side project there? Yeah. It's, or this is, is that the, something that the, you're gonna focus on no this will be this will be a side if you look at the back yeah yeah it's almost solid yeah no it, it'll be it'll be in conjunction with it's probably it probably won't get as big as the snakes but um it's definitely you never know lizards have a lot more babies than snakes more often no no you never know look i'll show you this other one I think those geckos lay like two eggs every like sixty days or something like that, right? In, in breeding yeah, season, or every yeah, every every month, I think. Oh really? Yeah, that's even more often. <laughs> I mean, at least it's only two eggs. It's not like thirty or forty like a bearded dragon. So this this guy will jump. I I um I bought this. I bought him as a as a male. Uh, let's see if I could get him to face away. His pattern on the side ah. looks like a pinstripe because the other one was like a fat, like white wall tire. So now he's a, like a pinstripe tire. He's a, he's what you call a quad stripe, right? He has four stripes, empty back. He might be, he might be hypo. Hmm. But yeah, cool little guys. And this guy's That's a little bit. I think twice as, but yeah. Anyways, this is the other project. It's not only, uh, I see, oh man, I see these guys. I had lizards before. These don't grow that big. Yeah. I figured, why not? Let's, let, let's go for it. So and my son has a bearded dragon, and I, I have a panther come in, but something that I'm getting into on a side project is, you know, I shared it on the Instagram, the Eastern collared lizards. No. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. They I don't see get that. very big and they are, I mean, that, that's a female that I shared the photos of with all the oranges in her. I did not expect that female to get that colorful. Like I thought she was just going to be cool, not colorful, but she's like incredible. And um, the males, I mean, the males are either like intensely blue with oranges and yellow heads or, you know, they're just all, all crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The youth is definitely the future. Without the youth, the, you know, our industry will die. <laughs> you make me one. Well, what are you going to make, Chase? Where are you going to make one? <laughs> yeah, the, the, I mean, they're the future of everything, right? That's. Yep. We have I mean, to, you know, engage. you have to shape your kid to want to progress <laughs> because if you don't teach your kid progression, then they're going to find complacency and complacency is what, what ends things. Yeah. I don't want the, I, well, the one thing that I hated the most is, or even, even right now is these kids just on their phone or these kids on, on whatever they're out there. 
and like get out there. So wh- I, what I used to do with my daughter, we used to go. Up, there's a trail over here, and we used to go herping. Yeah. So I, I'd find uh, we find garter snakes, we find California king snakes, gopher snakes. I found a gopher snake like six feet long. That thing was that would huge. Be awesome. Thanks, Chase. I like that that little white one with the li- and she has lineage. So that's the other thing, right? These <laughs> these, these geckos they come with they have you can get them with lineage and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like lineage is important in a lot of different species nowadays. Red face, that's what it is. Yeah. And and even even in even in um ball pythons, right? It's a lot of lineage gets lost. Yeah. And someone was talking about it the other day on the live where <clears throat> They get they get hidden genes pop up in their in their collection because they either they yeah. didn't tell them they didn't know or they didn't know how to identify it or whatever it may be. Or in the past, uh, you know, morphs were you know forgotten, and there was a point in time where I was going to shows and literally ready to breed exanthic VPI females wouldn't sell for a hundred fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there was a time, and yeah, exactly. Like babies, not babies were getting wholesale. Visual exanthic VPI babies were getting wholesale. I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> it made me not get in, into the morph because I thought that it was dead. I thought, like, you know, this was ten yeah. years ago, and maybe longer. And I was just like, "Well, exanthic just ain't where it at, I guess, because the market it doesn't reflect it." So. Yeah. You know, JD Constriction changed all that. I mean, he yeah. I think was the biggest name but, in changing that as a as like a that's the thing, right? You you hit the right combo, you get people excited about that gene and it blows up. It's just what happens. Dude, so, did you read that? <laughs> what? <laughs> that yeah. two egg two eggs every month. I, I'm telling you. But but they they're not consistent. 120 and, geckos last year. You're gonna have a house for over <laughs> more more geckos than snakes, dude. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna buy that many geckos. Again, I'm gonna start producing my geckos from a small group and then adding as I need to. I'm not. And then. So remote. how many how many adults did it take for you to produce 120 geckos? Let's ask for the yeah. sake of. And, uh, and, and how long is their season? Because it's not a year. They're not in season all year. I'm. I, if I do remember correctly, I think it's a six month season. They don't just produce. I was just going to end up with like 30 babies from one. No, I'm like, oh, Jared, Jared I'm going to send you a package, a care package. Don't worry about it. I awesome. got <laughs> I'll take it for sure. I need my own snake hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So uh, the guy, Angel Carl, he was, he he's 3D printing his snake hooks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I had him on the what, live. What business is he? What what company? His name. It's uh, Carl Reptiles. Oh, okay. It's just his name. Yeah. Yeah, I had him on the live last week. Yeah, that's who you. Because he he's 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 heavy in the vanilla, and I'm heavy in the, um, the discards. discards. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what it says. He says. That and I'm from, heavy in fire. Yeah. Huh? And I'm heavy in fire. As far got, as, like, I don't have any vanilla or disco. I got fire, though. We got the three. Cover. So he, he says that's from seven females. Oh, okay. 12 months straight, 24 eggs in a year. From one See? female. There you go. Yeah, but if, if you don't want to hatch them, you just... Never mind. Just, you just eat them. <laughs> just take them as your new protein <laughs> diet, right? It's your new workout plan. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. We're just <laughs> that's why we, that's where the better, faster, stronger comes in. Yeah, right. Exactly right. The workout See, plan. Did you, did you uh did you look that movie up? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta watch it again though, because I do remember it, but I gotta watch it again just because it, I remember how good it was. It's, um, so the the uh, the relationship between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Palumbo golden. Anybody is looking for a black pastel 
orange dream 100 percent pet clown i have this female that i am releasing out of my rack of purchases because i just don't have a plan for her. that's really it i have a lot of um i think i have cinnamon in my collection more so than black pastel so i'm gonna probably just try to stick with the cinnamon instead so if anybody's interested in this female orange dream i don't think she's high intensity or anything but she has some really really nice this this camera doesn't do it the, the light's washing out all of her orange but you can check out my instagram and see all the photos you can kind of see it there the saturation showing through but she's beautiful and i'll give somebody a great deal on her here you go here you go ball game says he'll take her all right well hit me up hit him I'll up work it out check look him up on on instagram yeah instagram is the best place to find me i got um i don't think i have anything else here i took some other snakes to uh cold-blooded sensations new retail store that they just opened a week ago and i nice. did a few consignments through there and that way uh try to help them get some variety in the store too because they have a lot of boas and geckos so so they they do take it so these crested gecko eggs take a long time to hatch the beauty, 16 days holy crap i'm gonna no incubate oh yeah for 116 days so they're like uh they're what, almost yeah. four months. But, and they're not even hatched yet? <laughs> no, but that's on the low end of the... So why why do you incubate so low, uh, Chase? I heard I heard incubation, well, I guess 70s. Yeah, 68, 70. I thought it was like 70 to 72 incubation. I guess the higher, the faster. Just depends on how you want to incubate. But this room that I'm in is where I have all the reptiles. It stays, it stays between... 71 72 73 so depending on if you go a little higher they they hatch faster but correct me if i'm wrong chase there might be problems with with incubating at higher temps what do you got there start breeding crested geckos in january and in may this yeah, is my favorite female Everybody usually asks, you know, like, what's that snake you go to first in your rack? That's like a common question on a lot of yep. lives. Well, this is my snake. This is my favorite female. I go to her when I go to my racks to check on her and make sure her water hasn't spilled and she ain't sitting in no wet towels or nothing. Like, yeah, nice. She's one of them, obviously, but she's definitely like, probably, I'd say, number one but she's a uh, blackhead leopard cinnamon clown 100 percent het pied and i bought her as a blackhead clown het pied knowing that she had leopard in her and i didn't know the, the cinna i knew the cinnamon was in the pairing after asking about the pairing info but i didn't think that it was in her until i got talking with uh billy from mutation creation one day and we were just talking about some animals and i showed him a picture of her and i was talking about a pairing that i was going to do with her and he was like man he's like are you sure that's not mahogany uh leopard clown and i'm like no it's definitely not mahogany but this is the pairing it came from and yeah i sent him the pairing info he's like dude he's like He's like, yeah, there's definitely something else going on and then when i figured out the pairing info i, I messaged him and i was like it's got to be cinnamon. I was like, that's the only other thing in the pairing. And that's the only other explanation as to why her head would be so orange and blushed yep. out. See the orange accents in her head? Yep. And that, that cinnamon. Head looks like a cinnamon clown head. A cinnamon leopard clown head, yep. Well, if, if you look at the, cinnamon, then, the cinnamon clown, it has that orangey, orangey tone. Oh, so she's trying to... So with the, with the crested geckos, if, if you... They'll hatch faster, but they'll be smaller at hatching. Where you incubate lower temps, and they'll be bigger. They'll be bigger. Um, they'll just be bigger, healthier babies. They said. All good, ball game. I got you. <laughs> so I this said, is another one of those. Um, you know, I got the eye. 
type of deals, you know, um, my knowledge paid off. I was at a show. I had no intentions of even buying an animal when I found her. And that's one of the other reasons why she means so much to me. Um, I bought her as a blackhead clown, 100% had piebald. Um, you know, uh, you can look up the value on that. That's pretty decent value in itself. And I got her for a steal as far as that value alone goes. I knew when I bought her that she had leopard. I asked about the pairing before, you know, settling on the purchase. I said, you know, what's the pairing that produced her? Um, yeah. You know, leopard was in the pairing. So right away, my suspicions of, you know, what I saw in her were confirmed. I was like, yeah, that's 100% leopard head, leopard clown head. And uh, once I found out that leopard was in the pairing, I was like, all right, I'll take her because I knew that I was getting the extra morph and I knew that I was getting a deal on top of it already. And then once I found out that, you know, through discussions with Billy at Mutation Creation that she had the cinnamon in her, I was like, man, that just increased this female's value through the roof. Like this is, if you look up a blackhead leopard, anything, clown hat pied there i can't look it up right now maybe you could but um anything blackhead you know triple codon with blackhead involved visual clown hat pied female is like five grand i want to say last i checked and i got her closer to the one grand mark you know the 1k range because because of my eye and because I knew what I was seeing was confirmable just through asking a question. And yeah. just knowing that it was leopard blackhead, double hex clown pied, her value was in the 2,500 to 3K range. And with the cinnamon added on top being a, you know, three genetic codom visual recessive with the head, now that just increases her genetic potential and value through the roof. So she is the one that I go to that I love the most, I'd say. But close second is my lightning pied. And this is my Marcus Jane Exanthic lightning pied. So these are my two favorite females. And they're the two that I will check on first before anything else. <laughs> nice. Damn, that's, yeah, that, that accented part is nice. It's a lightning pipe, right? Yep. You can see she has no, um, no tanning or anything. If you see anything that looks off black or white, it's just the lighting trying to adjust yeah. in the camera. <laughs> well, again, the white on the site kind of throws everything off. Yeah, the white really, like you could see the light trying to make adjustments right now, like just the sitting still. But she's just black and white and silver and gray. Um, you can just see the pictures on my Instagram. If the picture, if the camera isn't showing it off well enough, if you don't believe me, just check out the photos. <laughs> <laughs> but those are my two favorite females. So she is going into a a true ghost exanthic, um, a true ghost pied clown project. So I'm going for, I'm going to put, be putting her to my, um, my future. I'm going to be getting a, a number one and a number two male for the project. Obviously, um, my number two male will be the visual hypo clown het pied. And then my number one will be something a step greater don't know yet but same genetics but probably more codons involved so out of that pairing you know i'll be shooting for the best combinations possible um visual pied triple hat mj exanthic clown hypo that's what i'll be shooting for out of that pairing so long-term project big goal and you know the byproducts of that pairing will all be tested for the genetics before being listed available so everybody knows what they'd be getting from me out of that pairing and there would be no guesswork on your part or testing on your part because 
uh, a lot of that's going to happen in my parents. Um, a lot of my animals aren't going to be sold without testing because I need to, to know if I want to hold them back or not. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's one benefit to, you know, the pairings that I'll be doing <laughs> is uh, I'll have to test everything and well, one, nobody will get the guesswork. Or well, one, one downfall, right? It's having to test it all. Yeah. But <laughs> honestly, that would have been a downfall, a greater downfall three years ago, four years ago, because I would have been planning a pairing yeah. like that. And then I would have had to have planned to, to hold everything back. Yeah. And no, I would have had to I, had that space yeah. and I wouldn't have been able to even work a project like that. But now with genetic testing, I can work a project that deep in a two bedroom apartment. Yeah. Literally. Uh, yeah. And it's amazing that genetic testing has also opened up that avenue. Like, I don't have to hold back 30 snakes to work project anymore. Right. That's that deep. So the so I have a I have a girl right now. She's she's building right now, and she's she's actually the best vanilla cream or disco cream female that I have. I bred her right back to her dad. Okay. So, it's 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 uh her dad is a spot nose disco clown and she's a spot nose enchi vanilla disco head clown that was your most anticipated that's that's the one right now yeah, I, so I mean say it again say it again so it's a it's a spot nose disco clown male spot nose disco clown the female is a, a spot nose enchi vanilla disco head clown Oh, those Enchi Vanilla Disco Heck Clown. So you can get Super Discos, which is... Powerball. What's a Super Disco? No, what's a Super Disco look like? Okay. I'll, I'll pull it up. A Super Disco is like a Super Fire, right? No. It's no, not. they don't They don't go white? They actually have... um. They have um pattern. Oh, it's more like a Vanilla Fire combo? Or... No, no, so so vanilla, a uh, super vanilla is different than a super disco, which is different than a super. Okay, yeah, I don't think I've seen a super disco, so pull that up real quick. Like I'll I've show, seen it, I'll but I've just super disco, super disco. Like I'm sure um, I've seen it. I've just been so long. Yeah, no, no, it's not, the, it's not one of those morphs I've kept so up many. on. So, so the super disco and super vanilla look similar. Uh, let's see. How about this? I guess. And this is what I'm talking about. Clowns with dorsal pattern. Yes, I like that. And it's I it's like a, a stripe, but pattern. you keep you keep the side pattern. Yep. Okay, She's check, got a check. Big tail spit. check this out. So this is super disco. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit different than, yeah, it's definitely, I see the difference between the Super Vanilla and the Super Fire. Obviously, the Super Fire is white. Super Fire is way, way different. Yeah. So then, so then and then the Super do, Vanilla is way like the eraser head, you know? Yes. That's what the Super Vanilla is like, is like the eraser bald head. Yeah. That kind of, like, I'm not trying to be bald yet. Yeah. So the Super Disco just kind of eliminates the bald head, but shares a similar pattern, but so not this, as light, not as light. The Super Vanilla is a lot lighter than the Disco, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the, Super the, Disco Clown, yeah. Super Disco Clown, yep. That's sick. And that's just a Super Disco Clown. Yeah. It, it, imagine throwing everything else on top of it. it Put I mean, that exantic. Yeah, that, I mean... And this just being a base, it's I, I this is this actually got me into the disco to begin with. Okay, I, I can bought, see why. I bought the. And it definitely opens my eyes to the differences because um, I thought they interacted. I thought that disco and vanilla interacted extremely similar to where you couldn't tell a difference, but now I'm seeing very clearly a difference. Yeah, it's, uh, a, yeah, huge difference. Yeah, I've heard of the sulfur, but in my opinion, that was just a renamed disco. 
Let's see. Let's see. Let, 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 let's pull up the super. Sulfur came out way too. I don't know. It came, might have came from an import, so I can't say that. Super sulfur. Son of Go to this. sold. They might have some sold animals. Super sulfur. So, but that's I don't know like... if you were here, CKP, um, for my only pairing this season, but my most anticipated but only pairing this season that just came about is a pastel calico entry spot nose heck clown to a super red stripe leopard possible yellow belly clown male so we're going to try for some world first combos in that pairing this season so oh wow the super sulfur looks more like the super fire um but different different still because it has more pattern way more peppering way yeah. way more peppering unless that's something what's the pairing is there a pairing in the in like no in just super sulfur oh no, in the, the description let's see. let's see yeah pairing super sulfur mojave to super sulfur mojave so that might be a mojave super sulfur which might increase the speckling but still that's insane speckling Let's see. Let's see if there's another. This is a super sulfur Mojave. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I can see how the Mojave. I I believe that that looks like the Mojave stacked in. The other one I would see is more of yep. the super sulfur without the Mojave. But maybe it's and got yellow belly. Maybe the other one had yellow belly or inchy or something in it. Interestingly, this has. This looks a lot more like. A super fire, not as yellow, but it looks a lot more because like the Mojave pales out yeah. the saddles, just like how the Mojave pales out the saddles of a piebald. Yep. You know that's why I can see how that's stacked in there. But the other one, I that that just confirms in my mind that the other one didn't have Mojave in it. Yeah. So I mean, like for me, um, the super disco for me. On my um, what I'm trying to do, I'm going super disco. I like yeah. I like the pattern. Um, um, go down there to the bottom right there, a plus super sulfur. Uh, let's see, see if it has a description on it. Any a, no eating uh, live mice. <laughs> that thing looks like it's orange dream. Yeah, that that doesn't look like super, just super sulfur. Yeah, that looks like orange dream and like yellow belly or something. Now this the sulfur is cool. See this this right here looks like the the one that I produced similarly to the one that I produced the vanilla disco male that I had. That's the so lady. interesting though because I thought that sulfur was, was very like the same. I thought it was the same morph as like a fire or one of the other complex genes like specifically fire and seeing the super sulfur there's like definitively a line of you know two rows of black dots that goes down the spine yeah. of that snake that outlines a, a a pseudo stripe basically and i've not seen that before so that's interesting maybe i want sulfur instead of fire in my collection you want disco instead of all of them <laughs> Just, well, that's just, your that's your golden that's your baby child. I can't blow up the spot. You can do nah. There's enough room yeah. for all of us. I'll let you produce. But, but yeah, you, whatever whatever route the, like the fire for me taking out all of this, I would much rather have this than not. Yeah. On the for the or the the sorry the the back the dorsal, I'd rather yeah. have that than not. That's like the, a poor man's highway pine. <clears throat> yes yeah that is <laughs> right i mean am i wrong no nah, no nah, that looks that looks very i similar. don't know how i don't know how much highway pods are going for so i can't say <laughs> it's the poor man's highway pod because it looks 450 dollars still but i'd say it's see. less i'd say that's a lot less still it, is there is there a highway pod in here Oops. i'm interested to see what a highway pod i remember them looking similar to that Let's see how much they're going for. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Seven fifty. So not too bad. Not too. It's still lower, but 
Damn, that's that's actually not not a bad price for a highway bike. Sheesh. No, not damn, at all. That, that gets rid of that gets rid of all the pattern. Sheesh. Yeah, you'd have to take pinstripe or Enchi back into it. Yeah, those some. I feel like I feel like that snake would need Enchi Leopard just to have pattern and variability. Yeah, something, something. Yeah, I would throw Enchi. Man, that that's that's cheap for that for that snake. That why does that seem so cheap? Is that already sold? No. No, that's that's ready to roll. It's a male. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. If it was a female, she'd be fifteen hundred, probably. There she is, Paso Highway, Pied. Oh, even head clown to boot, fourteen hundred. That's nice. Oops. But another thing is though too is the value in that project sits in the supers. So if I could buy a super gravel pied head clown, I would yeah. pay three grand for that more. Then you know three grand for that as opposed to fourteen hundred for that, because I'm guaranteed getting the super gravel which I can right. pair to all my yellow belly shit. Yeah, and I don't have to worry about ivories at all. So that's where I think this value decreased in the way that you're seeing it. Chase, I'm on. I'm on the same train. I'd rather I take the poor man highway pie too. Dude, that one honestly looked better than this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you get way more pattern. The super sulfur looked way better than that. It's just genetically speaking, this is more powerful. But yeah, the, the for the difference of seven, for the difference of two hundred dollars, like I would go for the visual because that's probably more along the lines of somebody looking for a pet that looks better. You know. Yeah, and that's that's it's it's exactly what we're talking about. A genomic exactly yeah if it was super gravel pied hat clown it would be twice the amount because you guaranteed all gravels and no ivory like with a yellow belly pairing ah, 52 grams <laughs> was it 52 grams no nah. <laughs> was it 56 grams sir He's probably telling the truth then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Hatched out 52, now it's 56. It's got two, three meals in it. She's ready to sell. Oh, no, that man, I would. And so, if if I were to sell a snake, oh. I, I don't think I'd sell a snake under 100 grams. Yeah, I just don't think it's. I just I, don't think it's good for the snake. I don't want it to have some like, like I don't think it's bad practice or anything like that. Like it's whatever. Yeah. I think it's I think it's more so like you have to feel like you're securing the life of the animal for if somebody you're selling the animal to isn't ready to take on a snake that small. Right. That has feeding issues potentially. Yeah. And and, and that's where it comes that's what it comes down to, right? If it has feeding issues or a lot of snakes when you when you ship them, they tend not to eat right away. And they tend to go a little a little while without eating before they take that first meal. I don't yeah. know how many how many snakes that I've gone to, to do that. My least yellow belly had clown female from Morphed Out Reptiles. When I got her in, dude, like she was pretty small. She was probably like 80 grams or something like that. But she, I know she had eaten a few times, more than a few times. So I had no issues with her. But she wouldn't eat for me for like a damn near a month. And then eventually I'm like, you know what? Assist feed. Just yeah. kind of, you know, basically with an assist feed, you just kind of, you know, just kind of get that lower jaw opened up and then you get that head of the mouse right into the back corner of their yeah. jaw. And if it's a snake that wants to eat, they'll sit there, they'll breathe, and they'll be like, oh, my God, what's going on right now? What just happened to me? And then they'll just be like, all right, start chewing, and then they'll start eating. And then the bad snake is the one that's like, oh, my God, what the hell's in my mouth? And yep. they just curl around it, and they just rip their head off and pull it out of their mouth. Those ones chop the head off, shove the head back there, and then they can't wrap it and pull it out. That's a tough one. <laughs> like, but, 
I've had a few animals like that, and that's what I had to do with her. She was the type that I would get that and that mouse head, like the whole, you know, I'd have a, a pinky mouse and I'd get it worked back into the mouth and then she would wrap around the body and just pull it out. So eventually I just took a pinky head and this is what we do with green tree pythons. You know, you take a pinky head on a, on a shish kebab skewer right on the end of it just like, you know, the little you know, tribes do when they kill people yeah. in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but you do that, and then you, yeah. you wedge that with the stick. You wedge that head into the back. And then once it's back far enough and it's not going to come out, the skewer yeah. comes right off clean. If it comes out with the skewer, it's not stuck. It's that simple. Not Once it comes yet. off the skewer, it's stuck, and that snake can't get it out of its mouth. If it does, it's like, holy crap. Or yeah. David, and, and David Blaine. Like that. Name that snake David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had to assist feed a couple of them, a couple of hatchlings anyway. I don't assist yeah. feed my drone, my drone snakes. I don't assist feed. But uh, the hatchlings eat. And there's some that just don't eat coming out. They don't want to eat, and yeah. they get they get small and they get scary and you're like, I, I, I never let it get that bad, but it gets. Do you guys use tags? No. No? You no, use my, different tags? My collection's not even that big. No, not even shed tags. They're little clips. So you get shed tag, you get like, you know, live mouse tags. If I really have a bad snake and I have to force feed that bitch, I got a tag for it. But I haven't used the tag yet. Nice. Assist fed. We've had to use a couple of those tags. <clears throat> Refuse. Yeah, all so types, all types. Everything that I could think of that I want to label on that snake's enclosure that it's in the process of. Yeah. Whether it just refused a meal, whether it's got a live mouse in there with it, whether it's got a live pinky rat, just live feeder in general, you know, live feeder in general. Um, yeah. I try to try to keep it organized. I don't have enough snakes to need to do that. All the snakes like, eat fairly these little well. Things, man. They're just little, like five cent paper rings yeah uh, or key tag rings and you just yep. write whatever you want on them and i think they sell these for like a dollar fifty for a pack of 12 of those clips yeah it's no, awesome it's, I, it's, I, it's an easy tagging system yeah like i can look right now i got out of all 50 snakes i got four snakes left in shed and i removed three snake shed tags today because they got you know they shed out and got cleaned up so Nice. Yeah, I, so on my phone, I, I have like a notepad on my phone and I just, they shed, throw in the notepad. Yeah, my, see. My collection is not that big. See, I don't, see, but the reason why I tag a shed is not because they, they shed already. It's because they're in blue. So I'm not going to feed that snake. I'm not going to thaw out an animal. I'm not going to thaw out a fruit item for that snake. So I can look at my rack and I can go, eliminate six food items this week yeah. just by looking at it i don't have to go into my phone and go into it did i feed this snake last week did i feed that snake last week like reptile buddy if i go in there i have to click on each individual snake to see the last time it ate so if i know like it's in shed then i just know i'm not gonna feed it this week because it's got a tag on it yeah it, it just, just simplifies it on where you're at so i feed live i don't have to thaw out my my rats are right here. I'll throw one in the in the it like mine is super simple. It's it's not that involved. Yeah. Um I all my snakes I yeah. It's it when and I need my, it when it gets big enough, I'll need it and then I'll implement it. My personal collection I feed live just because it's gonna if you're breeding, feed yeah. live. Because if you wanna keep your animals stimulated, you wanna keep your animals hunting, you wanna keep your animals' natural instincts going. Yeah. Keep them on live, real food. I mean, only reason I like feeding frozen thought is because, you know, the risk of natural parasites and the, the risk of injury to your snake if you're feeding live. But the only reason why I, you know, 
everybody, if you are, if you're a hobbyist, you want frozen thought eating snakes. So my personal collection, I feed live. I do mix it up with frozen thoughts sometimes because I get deals on certain lots and stuff for my buddy that breeds and everything, rats and stuff. So I do mix, I mix both live and frozen thought, but something about the stimulation of feeding live that keeps your animals feeding, keeps them going. You know, I've never really, I can't say I've had as many issues with snakes going off of food when they were eating live consistently as opposed to eating frozen thawed. Yeah. And then the, and then there's other animals. So Chase says he puts a mouse in their hole. You do have to hold the mouth down sometimes. So they can't, they yeah, don't just, they'll they like don't. stretch their mouth to where it's like flat, almost like that. You know? <laughs> they'll go like this and then it's like, Oh, like that. And you like think it's stuck. And then they're like, yeah, 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 they get out of that thing. No, you have to, they, you have to actually hold their mouth so that their yeah. teeth, their teeth get stuck on the on the yeah. mouth of the rat pup or whatever. And wh what I do even is I'll pull the rat a little bit so that yeah, their hook dig in, and then just hold it. And then hopefully when you let it go, they wrap it right. That mm -hmm. that hooking of it gets them instinctually wrapping that snake. Yeah. He said, "Let me one with a Pokemon card." <laughs> nice. Yeah, you can just throw that underneath the underneath the tub. <laughs> and he says, "I'm old school. I write everything down in a book." Yeah, so I, I do it on my phone rather than my book. But yeah, I'm same. And well, David, what's up, David? Thanks for joining. You gotta write it all down. If you don't write stuff down, then you're failing yourself. <laughs> I don't have a notepad, but I have a notepad in my phone. The, the yeah. problem is when I get a new I got phone. All types of paper notes for all my project pairings, everything. If you're not writing stuff down, I mean, you forget. I have probably the worst memory. Like, I'm that guy that I do electric and I'm in the house and I'm like, man, I need to go outside for a drill and like a 916 paddle bit and like three fish sticks and some tape. And <laughs> on the whole walk there, I'll be thinking about snakes and shit. By the time I get to my van, I'm like, the fuck did I even come out here for? <laughs> and I look hey. at the house. I look at the house I just came out of, and I'm like, "What was I even doing in there?" <laughs> hey, I have to you. walk all the way back in to remind myself. Yeah, no, I was going acumorphs. It, it it happens. If, uh, if anyone's just joining, um, I've taught. I've done a lot of talking about my collection and some pairings that I got going on. So we're just kind of hanging out and just talking snakes and having fun at this point. Um, yeah, we, we I, I definitely encourage everybody to watch uh, the replay when it gets posted, just so that if you did miss the segment on what I'm doing here and the actual introduction, you can recap. Yeah, a ton of snakes. He showed up. He showed off for uh, Jared showed off in his collection. Talked about some of his future pairings as well. So. Uh, and our first pairing this season, we're actually going to be going for, you know, potential world firsts. So that's just setting the bar. Setting the bar high, you know. Keeping yeah, the actually, odds, keeping shoot, the odds shoot, high at the same time, though. <laughs> what do you do? Shoot, what do they say? Shoot for the moon, land on a star or something like that? Shoot for the yeah. star, land on the moon? Shoot for the star. Yeah, but, but, hey, Chase, do you have them desert field mice out there? That's why you can get away with that. It, I mean, there's different ways to to entice them to want to eat. And man, I had this. Like I told you, I had that. I had that. Um, she's a the Trojan female that I have, the fire Trojan, the pickiest eater you ever know. Man, if anybody's been hanging out this entire time, like. If there's a way, can we check and see who viewed, like how long people have viewed for after this? I don't know, but I know genomic genomics been on here for a minute. Yeah, He's been on here the whole time. So if I can confirm, like through comments, that someone's been with us this whole time, then I'm gonna yeah, give, them, I'm gonna give them a, I'm, 
I'll give them a voucher for five percent off for when I do start producing. <laughs> nice. Just for yeah. the support, because you've hung out for now three hours. I just noticed it's three hours, three hours. we've been streaming. So if you've been here this whole time and I can confirm it, then you get five percent off voucher that can be used on any purchase in the future. I'll send I'll send you man, I only have I only have stickers right now. I'll give you guys a discount too. Anyone on here? Discount. Send me send me your address on uh on on Instagram. I'll send you some stickers. Definitely. See, genomics on here. He's been on here for. Yeah, I know genomics been this whole time. I I don't even have to confirm Minute. that. I watched them come on early. For CKP's sure. He's been around. He's been hanging out for a long time now. Mm. So. Oh, I'm sure we'll do business either way, but. Either way, I'm, always. You know, we're, you know, in this company, in this field, in any kind of business, you have to, you have to promote yourself. And the only way to promote yourself is to, you know, help other people help themselves in the same sense. So if I can help you help yourself by helping me, we're both benefiting. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go this way. Hey, I, I did the same thing. I have to go back and rewatch some stuff, David. It's, it's just how it goes. It's just how yeah, it goes. Yeah, for sure. These, some of these longer ones and i'll post this up and uh i'm even gonna cut it up on to to show some of the highlights too so no big deal hey acu says double the price and give me half off <laughs> otherwise forget it <laughs> you got it all right done done i'm done no but it's it's i mean Obviously, we can talk snakes, and people like listening to snakes. Snakes, reptiles in general, is, it's kind of where it's at. I used to do the same thing with dogs, so. He's going to be upset when he just joined, and he's going to watch the replay and see what just went down. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Every, everything he missed. Or be pleasantly uh, surprised. We next won't... time, you won't miss our stream. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be on time. Is, uh, where are you guys from? Where everyone put, I know where Chase is from. Yeah, let's start answering some questions. We got, I'll, I'll hang out for like another half hour. I actually got the day off of work tomorrow to spend the nice. entire day with my son for his birthday because he's on spring break. So it's like 12, uh, 12, 12 here, but I'll hang out for like another 30 minutes. Nice. So, what, what part of Cali are you in? Genomics? Oh, we'll definitely meet soon. I'll, I'll be at some of the, uh, I'll be at some of the uh, shows here. I'll, I'm trying to hit all those shows in California uh, this year. I won't be able to hit the Sacramento show because my daughter's driving down. So other than that, I'll try to be at the other one. Mm -hmm. Don't want to miss anything. Yes. I appreciate it. We try, man, to bring, I don't know. we try to bring their stuff. Thanks. I don't know if... Um... If this will happen next year or the following season, but I also have a bow constrictor pairing lined up that I already have raising up. So I have a female IMG um, increasing melanin gene, 100% um, HET VPI T positive albino. So she should end up being um, nearly an all black boa constrictor with a little bit of like patterning like white line patterning around her tail saddles and stuff but um mixed in with the i have a male visual t positive of uh, vpi albino but he's also got the co-dominant key west morph and so i'll be going for img key west vpi t positive boas which is i don't even know if those have been Hit yet? I think they have. Uh, I've been trying to find a picture of one. I can't find a picture of one. So right. I yeah. think they've been made, but that's definitely something that I'm excited for. I love all black snakes, and a black bow is my favorite. Hmm. Nice ACU. Th thanks for joining from Wisconsin. Hey, what's Thank Wisconsin you. known for? What's Wisconsin known for? Down and down and yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, Wisconsin's buddy. known for the cheese curds. They they are they are the cheese state, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ontario. Ontario. Up there by Billy. 
Nice. Hey, you guys are you guys are up in the what what, is, what time is it over there? Like twelve now? Yeah, he's at my time. Nice. Jose, pin his comment. How, how do you pin this comment? This you can, can you pin it? I can't pin this comment. Yeah, you can make it pop back up. I'm gonna leave it you right there. Highlight it. Bring it back you up. Highlight it. I I started, but it's on there. He says cheese and brats. <laughs> there you go. Ten <laughs> percent off what? Ten percent. Resend the comment because I don't know if Jose's got it. Where's is it a private chat or what? No, yeah, but it's on the stream on YouTube. I oh, can't see I can't see oh, the comments, but I'll go to I'll go to YouTube and, and I'll pin your comment. I got you, no worries. No worries. But I'll I'll definitely pin it so that people people can see it te just so I know, what are we getting? What are we getting ten percent off of Chase? Yeah, we're trying to find out. <laughs> so, is it, is it the Lugardi? Here's another girl that I would say I'm considering letting her go. Um, I got her just because I wanted a visual DG for a few projects, but I'm going to be producing animals that have more genetic power than she will and they'll be old <laughs> they'll be raised up maybe only a season off from her breeding so if anyone is interested in a pastel desert ghost female they can hit me up on instagram she has no other recessive pets or anything like that that are known she's just a very very clean example of a pastel desert ghost female But she's one that I, you know, if I if I hold on to her, I'm gonna put her into probably. I don't know, I don't know what I'd put her into. I'd probably end up putting the male to her, the triple hat male, and go for more possible double hat visuals. But nice, I got enough going on in that project. I don't <laughs> need that. So if anybody yeah, so you is interested, you don't need. cut the fat. Dan, this, this guy's 15 minutes from Billy. Never visited. No, David, David Blacken in the back. David. <laughs> oh shit! I go visit. Jared, Jared, where are you from? Florida. What part of Florida? Yeah, we're just uh, just south of St. Pete. St. Pete. Saint Where's Pete, that? Tampa. Oh, Tampa. You're on the you're on the west coast, right? Yeah, Gulf Coast. Hey, so they, they, you guys have Malibu Beach out there by in Tampa, right? Is it Malibu? in Tampa? Uh huh. I've never heard of it. Where, where's uh, where do they find all the shark teeth? Oh, Is that's um, oh, over here. So we have Venice Beach in Venice, Florida Venice. on the Venice. Gulf Coast. Yeah. Yeah. That gets confusing though with California. Yeah, I know they, they. So not here. I'll have to go. Uh, so Chase, I'll go on the um, the actual. I, I don't see it here, but it's gonna be on the actual video on YouTube. And don't worry, I got you. I got we'll you. Pin it. He'll pin it on the on the repost. Yeah, and, and again, if you, guys, if you guys aren't following, oops, this way. If you guys aren't following Jared, go to his Instagram, hit him up. The selective, selective underscore creation. creations underscore est period 2024. Nice. Selective underscore creations should pull it up. Yeah, you could even uh, I even searched up selective creations and pulled it up. Yeah, you guys are fine. I tried, to, I tried uh, so to really pick a name and a brand and something that was gonna stick out, be clean, professional, and really fully encompass everything I want to do because I don't want to just work with ball pythons and I don't just want to work with snakes. I want to work with anything I want to and this kind of just gives me that full range of motion. Right. Oh, okay. You got to be live right now supporting 
though not the rerun. <laughs> yes, sir. So, po- po- like I said, I post it. I-, I put it in the comments, but post it up, and I'll I'll um I'll highlight your comment. I'll put it up. I don't see it here. This is this is the only comment that I've seen. Oh, you can't see it here. That's why. Yeah. So, C- so CKP just um, recomment it, and then yeah, maybe you can pin it. Put in the put in the chat and chat, and I'll pin it up. Yeah, there you go. But um, yeah, reptiles. I like reptiles. I, I will. I will expand the the Crested Gecko collection a smidge. I, I'm thinking five total. If <laughs> hey, isn't that what you said when you got into ball pythons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've been able <laughs> to hold that off. I've been able to hold that off. <laughs> Not, yeah. I've been able to hold that off. The, the, the problem is that the crested geckos seem to be prolific, right? The prolific Trying to pinch deer. it off, you're like, <laughs> you're start choking over. I have a whole garage. I can move into the garage. No, no, no. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And then my daughter, when, so I'll have a whole nother bedroom once my daughter, dang, that's not going to be for another couple of years though. Cause she'll be back. <laughs> from, she'll be back from Canada and then, She's gonna do her masters and then she's gonna and then she's gonna go out for her PhD. Okay. So it's gonna be a minute before she's out. Just tell her she's gonna have some uh roommates. <laughs> You're like you could still have your room, but there's like gecko cases on your dresser now. Yeah, don't worry. You you'll be sleeping on them. Don't worry about it. Your bed frame is now just gecko bins. <laughs> exactly yes the i actually knew i actually and it has nothing to do with reptiles but i actually growing up knew a kid that didn't have like a box spring and a bed frame and but he had a bunch of those giant storage totes from home depot and he used those to build a frame under his bed for his mattress <laughs> he just put a yeah. bunch of them side by side and he laid the mattress on top and it looked just like a normal bed, and you, <laughs> when you laid on it, you cu- couldn't tell unless you like were moving around a lot, you know. <laughs> Any hair. But oh. yeah, I was like, "That's funny." Until those bu- those so many those people bu- that I I hear about. Sorry, so many people I hear about hiding snakes and stuff under their beds growing up. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So hey, the the ball python Burmese hybrid. Do you like them? The bad eaters, or or the 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 ball python blood. Which one's the blood? What's that one coined with the name of it? I know the berm bat, the berm ball is the bad eater, or no, the, the bad eater might be the berm retic. I'm not sure, but I what think is- the bur- the ball bloods are pretty pretty wicked. I saw like a Mojave, um, a Mojave ball blood hybrid. That was freaking insane. Hmm. It was like a Mojave ball python to like a granite Borneo blood, and they made a what looked like a Mojave Angry. hybrid. Angry balls, not the hunger hunger balls. What's the what's the hunger ball? Angry balls, yeah. Look, that the angry balls I think are the um. Oh, the blood ball? The blood ball. That would make sense because blood pythons are angry. They, yeah, they, they they are dicks. Especially the dark ones like the uh, the black short tail Sumatran pythons. Those ones are really, they got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are nothing but nice. Something that I haven't talked about and no one actually knows that I'm getting into is have you ever heard of uh, static? No. Oh, oh static hold on. is like acid and confusion. I did hear it. that's that's a poor man's acid on. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, static actually is holding its value greater than both of those but because is it the same? Or is it different? It's similar, but it's it's noticeably different. Okay. 
Yeah, so I'm getting, I liked the static. I, okay, so like when Confusion and Acid came out, I was like, all right, Acid I like a little bit more than Confusion. It was a little busier. And uh, at least in my eyes, it was a little busier. Yeah. Could have just been the combos or some phenotypical differences or something. But when I saw the static, I was like, this looks like Confusion with Banding or something in it, you know? already mixed in and that's what i see that's different is it looks like it almost has a banding trait to it but it's it's not it's not entirely different enough to go that is a different morph you know you still classify it in with the other two um i think the masses will still classify it in with the other two so i will still say you know static acid confusion for the sake of that until proven otherwise, but I'm getting into the um, Exanthic Clown, VPI Clown project, because I didn't have anything in that project yet, as far as Exanthic Clown stuff at all. I was going to work on making my own double head, triple head, and quad hat stuff, as far as like that Marcus Jane line Exanthic, but a deal came across my table I just couldn't pass up. Um, I ended up, I'm getting on um, next week, or this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. Yes. So you got to pick them up. Uh, yeah, at the Repticon in Sarasota, Repti Day nice. Sarasota. I'll be there. Um, if anyone's around, say hi to me and stop by. But uh, I will just be, I'll be at the show enjoying it. But um, <laughs> my buddy from Garden of Eating Exotics is supposed to be, coming to the show to drop off hold that thought thought. hey guys i i pinned the con or i put the comment here ckp reptiles ckp right yeah ckp reptiles he's on instagram just go search him up and give you a deal there you go go for it give us a like and a follow for support and then you'll give you your 10 percent off go get it go get it it says you got to so, follow. We appreciate that support. We appreciate the call out and and giving a discount on our live. That's awesome. Oh yeah. So I'm getting a static double hat exanthic clown VPI, and I'm getting a visual pastel exanthic pet clown female. And oh, so the exanthics work in your line. You said VPI. I have, I have VPI and I have MJ. So the VPI will mix into my other stuff too. But um, I didn't have anything VPI clown, like double hat project. Yeah. So now I have a visual hat clown going to a double hat and it's static. So static exanthic clowns have not been produced yet. Static exanthic clowns haven't been produced yet, and the combos of that have not been produced yet. Um, I was trying to price market value on that animal because it was something that kind of came across the plate, and it wasn't something that the guy was even planning to sell, I guess. But um, I was trying to help him out, and he helped me out. And... It's a I, I like the community because we do that for each other. But I was just going to say real quick, the comparison, the only comparison I could find was a, um, it was a pinstripe confusion double hat exanthic clown female by Canova. And it was like two grand. Sheesh. Yeah. So, so it, it does like different. Okay. So let's see. Static. What, what, what's a good static? Uh, let's go high to low. I'm looking at static spot nose. I mean, static spot nose is pretty comparable to confusion spot nose. Like you can compare them easily, I should say. Oh, hold on. Look, hold on. They're does similar, look, you know. Does this look familiar? What, what, what does that remind you of? So. Does that remind you of um, the extremist gene that they just labeled mace? 
I mean, there's a lot of different animals and different combinations of morphs that look similar. Look at this. Yeah. Crazy, right? Anyways, mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty funny. So you said the a a static yeah, that male. Who knows what that male is, or that I don't know if it's a male, but who knows what that animal is that you have? You're gonna have to breed them and and prove them out. Oh yeah, that, yeah. So you said static um, spot nose. Static spot nose, I think, would be a good thing to compare to confusion spot nose, just because it's a common thing you can find. So there's, there's a static spot nose. With pastel. With pastel. With pastel. Not bad. All right. So let's now see. You see it. Now you see the one thing that I noticed the most is that static. And spot nose creates that black dorsal stripe, especially apparent by the tail. And it kind of mm-hmm. squares off the top of the alien heads and it boxes off more of the alien head pattern, like throughout the whole snake. You can see it there. Yeah. So they, they said that that other snake. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Chase, for sure. Anyway, anyway, we can help as well. It did look it did look real ish for sure because of all the floating alien heads. That was the, but the vanilla snake. vanilla into the static, I think, is what is creating that combo because it's it's opposite. Leopard creates a black bag, vanilla creates doesn't create a black bag, you know. So and this one is what you're talking about. So yeah. no, but they were saying about the, the real being um the lesser too. But yeah, yeah the yeah, real the, looks the like that. And then and it, it does look more disco because the head is not blown out like a vanilla should be blown out. Mm. It's just not as faded as a vanilla should be. Um the head anyway. But that's lesser in play. And lesser is darkening because the the Yeah, I mean yeah, you know, lesser can, darkens the blushing. You you can make that argument too, because you can kind of see yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one. So so if we look at the that's ass, just the interaction of the morphs. That's all that is. So if, the static so, the static likes to do that dorsal in certain combinations. So this is this is spot nose static pastel pastel. Now, now let's look at the pastel spot nose confusion. The confusion. I might have um. They have it in here, and they have a clown. Of course they do. You have to go Lois first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't go. You can't go that way. Confusion cinnamon. They're right there in the, the second one. Four hundred. Pastel those Spano's confusion. See how rounded all that pattern is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely you could definitely it's tell that different. It's... You know, they act different. It just doesn't doesn't do the same to me. Like I see a visible difference, and that's why I'm investing in static right now. Because static to me is different. And static static you can you can argue that it's a cleaner. It's not as busy. A cleaner confusion, yeah. It's not as busy, yeah. I feel like it has more potential in leopard and spot nose than this does because this already looks like it has leopard nice. in it, you know, but it doesn't. Thanks, good night, good night. Have a good night. Enjoy. Thanks for watching and hanging out. I'll be sure to text me, message me. Yeah, same. We'll send you a little care package. Yeah, anybody that's watching currently, message me for a 5% off voucher to use in the future. And if you are not here live for this right now, and you're not messaging me before 1 p.m., then I'm not gonna honor it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm gonna cut it off. I wonder I wonder how, why it won't tell us who's watching. Janavik got in. I mean, he might've took off already, but he's been here the whole time. They've been here. Oh, the he's, time. yeah, he was here the whole yeah. time. Anyhow, that's a... But yeah. you see the difference that I'm saying between static and acid and confusion. Yeah. 
Yep. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll take static. I'll go for it. It even it even worked better in the past sell. So um actually go on to Morph Market. Yeah. Oh wait, no, never mind. Never mind. It's not on there. I was thinking he made an ad that I uh maybe he did. Go to sold. Go back on the morph market, type in static and type in hat clown and type in head exanthic vpi and hit sold and just see if anything pops up the static double head exanthic clown see if anything pops up on sold because i feel like he made a listing and then i went in there and i and i inquired just so that i could do the review for him you know let's see let's see i'm gonna go um, highest first because it would be the highest no it would be Oh, well, maybe I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. Well, I don't think he made a listing. How would I if it's not sold? How would I find it? Oh, it would be under sold, but I don't remember if he did. Go down. Pastel static. We're looking for clown, right? Hats. Hat. Pet clown. Head exanthic. Static oh, pastel head exanthic. Yeah, look at that. 2K for a head exanthic. So, yeah, the mail that I got that's a static double head exanthic clown is like oh, incredibly valuable, man. Like, yeah, oh my, they, oh my yeah. goodness, I can't believe the value that I got from that mail. Like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> even the value at 2K is like, wow. But the value at what he's worth, it would just probably go up. Go up to the top. I want to see those other genetics that were like 4K. Hold on, stop. Penstripe, Vanilla, Static. These are older older morphs. Static, Acid, Firefly, Hat Clown. So that's 6K for a Static, Pastel, Fire, Hat Clown. So if you look at him as a Static, Double Head, Exanthic Clown, I would say as a male, he'd probably be worth like 4 yeah, somewhere. You know, look, look, look at four. A killer bee static, just a killer bee static. Thirty-seven fifty. Yeah. Static is is like monarch, you know. Like we have similar morphs, but we can tell it's visually different. And the people yeah. who are working it aren't coming down. They're not breaking on that price. They're not. They're right. not saying like they're not agreeing. Like yeah, it's the same, and we're gonna bring our price down to accommodate your thoughts they're like no screw your thoughts we know it's different <laughs> yeah have a good night man chase thanks for thanks for hanging out i appreciate it so hopefully um that nice. doesn't stir up too much controversy but <laughs> <laughs> not nah, you know what everyone has their own preference it, yeah. it comes down to what you like you're gonna do what you like whatever Someone does not everyone. Not everyone is gonna like everything, right? So I'm an electrician. Static just goes better. They named it just for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Confusion. Hardwired, hardwired exotics gonna have to get some static too. Confusion could also work, right? It's confusing as shit running all that wire. Yeah. It could all be. The I was, I was a, a journeyman, a journeyman, no, uh, an apprentice to an electrician for yeah. a little while, but it ended up not working for my uh, schedule. But yeah, that stuff is getting into some of those, um, some of those more complex um, wiring diagrams and shit. Acid blackhead fire hat lavender. That's going to be nice when you get that lavender in there to express. Yeah, it's going to be nice. That's gonna be nice. Anyhow, Super purple. Let, let's call it. Let's call it. Yeah, it's a good night. It was a good stream. I yeah, think it was a good we one. had. I don't know how many viewers we had. I can't see any of that, but I appreciate everybody stopping by, and I'll let you do your outro. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining. Thanks everyone in the chat for joining. Uh, that way, give them a follow, follow the channel, drop a like. Subscribe. We do all this stuff. Anything, Instagram, all the socials. Um, 
Drop uh, comments in the in the down below. Give us some ideas what you want to hear, what you what you like, and uh, we will see you on the next one. Appreciate everyone that joined. Again, uh, anyone who joined, send us messages. We'll send you some things for joining for staying <laughs> for staying here for that long. We're at three and a half hours, so I appreciate you guys. Don't forget this key tag. Two one seven, like and follow. Yes, indeed. Two one seven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. And we're out.